engagement program. Please stand by. We will be starting exactly at 9 o'clock. For the meantime, we will be playing the videos starting now. research and idea generation in essence after 45 years the development academy of the philippines has much to be proud of from its small but ambitious beginnings in 1973 the DAP has grown even beyond its founding father's vision and expectations. Over the years, the DAP was led by these men and women whose values, passion, and innovative ideas have greatly contributed to its growth. Their competent leadership laid the foundation for the DAP's place in history. Initially, the DAP was created to train career executive service officers in government. Later, the mandate has also included strategic and policy-oriented research and idea generation, in essence being the think tank for the government. It was a good connection. What started out as small ideas have today become institutions in themselves. They were innovations that identified needs and offered solutions and which now continue to serve the public in many different ways. The DAP's early training and education programs for government executives were also unique and legendary. They can largely be credited for a bureaucracy that has remained professional, competent, neutral, even through numerous administration changes. The DAP also contributed to national productivity and introduced the concept of wiser use of resources for better results. It was instrumental in helping local governments rise above the disasters that hit them. Today, with its cutting-edge training and education programs, the DAP not just develops high-potential executives and managers, it is also molding transformative leaders in the public sector. Leaders who are quietly and efficiently responding to people's needs. We need to open up our graduate school to visiting professors from abroad and also to take advantage of uh, the technical experts coming from the AP or countries of which we are a member. The DAP continues to help the government become more effective by pushing for the results-based performance management system, which ensures that the president's vision and goals for the country are implemented correctly. In 2015, the Philippines was recognized by the APO 
as the center of excellence for public sector productivity, mainly because of the programs built to streamline processes and make service client-focused. Eventually, the public can expect shorter lines and quicker service. While keeping a low profile and being content to work in the background, the DAP remains relevant and sensitive to the public's needs and expectations. DAP as a knowledge institution is a solutions provider. DAP as an institution is exactly what our bureaucracy needs at this time. An institution that creates the best ideas for our bureaucracy to work. And that is exactly what we need in governance. Unless there is such an institution, we do not expect change to come automatically. After 45 years, DAP's founding fathers must really be smiling. After 45 years, the Development Academy of the Philippines has much to be proud of. From its small but ambitious beginnings in 1973, the DAP has grown even beyond its founding father's vision and expectations. Over the years, the DAP was led by these men and women whose values, passion, and innovative ideas have greatly contributed to its growth. Their competent leadership laid the foundation for the DAP's place in history. Initially, the DAP was created to train career executive service officers in government. Later, the mandate has also included strategic and policy-oriented research and idea generation, in essence, being the think tank for the government. It was a good connection. What started out as small ideas have today become institutions in themselves. They were innovations that identified needs and offered solutions, and which now continue to serve the public in many different ways. The DAP's early training and education programs for government executives were also unique and legendary. They can largely be credited for a bureaucracy that has remained professional, competent, neutral, even through numerous administration changes. The DAP also contributed to national productivity and introduced the concept of wiser use of resources for better results. It was instrumental in helping local governments rise above the disasters that hit them. Today, with its cutting-edge training and education programs, the DAP not just develops high-potential executives and managers, it is also molding transformative leaders in the public sector. Leaders who are quietly and efficiently responding to people's needs. We need to open up our graduate school to visiting professors from abroad and also to take advantage of uh, the technical experts coming from the AP or countries of which we are a member. The DAP continues to help the government become more effective by pushing for the results-based performance management system, which ensures that the president's vision and goals for the country are implemented correctly. In 2015, 
the Philippines was recognized by the APO as the Center of Excellence for Public Sector Productivity, mainly because of the programs built to streamline processes and make service client-focused. Eventually, the public can expect shorter lines and quicker service, while keeping a low profile and being content to work in the background the DAP remains relevant and sensitive to the public's needs and expectations. DAP, as a knowledge institution, is a solutions provider. DAP, as an institution, is exactly what our bureaucracy needs at this time. An institution that creates the best ideas for our bureaucracy to work. And that is exactly what we need in governance. Unless there is such an institution, we do not expect change to come automatically. After 45 years, DAP's founding fathers must really be smiling. Let's watch the webinar etiquette. What do people actually expect? What do people actually expect from the government? All right, good morning, everyone. It's already nine o'clock. So be ready to start our session. Okay, so welcome to the introductory course on innovation approaches using 56002 version 2019 innovation management system. I'm Angela Vargas. I'll be facilitating the course this morning. Okay, so to start off, let's proceed with an opening prayer.
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فقال ربكم ادعوني أستجب لكم آمين يا رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين هدينا سرات المستقيم سرات الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين اللهم اجمع شامل المسلمين وكريستيان ولومت في مدينة دباو وسلم دائما مجتمعنا هذا بسلم والأمن والتقدم في بلدنا هذا آمين يا رب العالمين ربنا لا تجيغ قدوبنا بعد جهدتنا وهب لنا من لدن رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا تنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله على خير خلقه سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يسيبون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you today to praise and worship you and give you thanks for all the things you continue to provide for ourselves and our families. Father, we humbly ask for forgiveness for all the times we have offended you. When we forget to acknowledge your presence in the image of our brothers and sisters, and for moments we fail to be good stewards of the blessings you have given us. Continue to guide and protect each one of us, Lord, that we may always walk in the light of your everlasting love and mercy. Grant us, Father, with your comfort in times of distress and with your strength in times of weakness. Bestow upon us your unending grace and healing, that me, me in turn become instruments of gentleness and compassion to others. We ask all this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the prayer and the intercession of our Blessed Mother. Amen. Welcome everyone to the training course again. So, kamusta po kayong lahat? We're glad you're able to join us. Um, meron po tayong mga ilan-ilan na ngayon. How many participants right now? We have 22 na po tayo dito sa Zoom. At meron na din po tayong around sa YouTube. So, welcome po sa Zoom at welcome po sa ating YouTube participants. Okay? So, tayo po ay nandito for the introductory course on innovation approaches. For two sessions po tayo mangyayari for today, we are a half day from 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock. And the same time for August 18 po ang ating continuation ng session. So to start again our session, let me call on the Director, Supervising Fellow of the Productivity and Development Center, Advocacy Institutional Development Office, Director Evangeline M. Macariora for the welcome remarks. Let's give her a round of virtual club. Good Hello. Morning, Eva. Yes, good morning. Ayan, maganda pong umaga sa inyong lahat. Welcome to this introductory course on innovation approaches using ISO 56002-2019 Innovation Management System. This is actually the fourth of the series of virtual introductory courses on productivity and quality improvement approaches. This series is one of the deliverables of the government quality management program, which envisions taking a great leap in its 
priorities by leveling up your quality improvement initiatives and building capacities in fostering quality across public sector organizations. So, kung meron po kayong mga uh, certifications to ISO 9000 or certification to ISO 9001, uh, 2015 version and other no, ISO standards para po sa inyo ito. Diba? Kailangan i-level up na natin yung uh, ating QMS. Okay, so we are glad again that you are able to join us today and thank you to everyone and to your speaker, and to our speaker, Professor John Del Rosario, who accorded our invitation this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Lincoln Bayan, we are all aware that we are in the midst of a crisis like no other. Last year, COVID-19 has changed the way we live and how we provide public services and the way we do business. And even when the pandemic is eventually over, no, we don't know after a year or more than uh, a year, no, two, three years, how we provide public services and the way we do business no, uh, has changed already. And even when the pandemic is eventually over, things will never be the same again. We will have a new normal. The question we will ans be answering now is, how can a quality management system based on ISO 9001 2015 and other standards and approaches like ISO 9004, ISO 30,401, ISO 56,000 to be able to help our organizations to survive, recover, and eventually succeed during this crisis. Today, we are here to specifically learn about innovation management system that is ISO 56000 to 2019 version. Now, one of the innovation approaches no, that uh, we can use. Swerte po tayo no, na nandito ngayong umaga because ISO 56000 to 2019 is a brand new standard for introducing innovation directly focused on business value tied to client goals and objectives. So sana, no, ang kasama natin ay uh, yung mga decision makers ng organization natin. This guidance document assists organizations in the establishment, implementation, maintenance, and continual improvement of an innovation management system. All the guidance within this document is generic and intended to be applicable to all types of organizations, whether public or private, regardless of sector or size. The focus is not only for established organizations, but also for temporary organizations and startups, which can actually, which we can apply, no? which can apply these guidelines fully or in part. So the standard is also applicable to all types of innovations like product, service, process, a model, and method ranging from incremental innovation to radical innovation. It is also applicable to all types of, of approaches, internal and open innovation, user innovation, market innovation, technology, and design-driven innovation activities. It does not describe detailed activities within the organization, but rather provides guidance at a general level. It does not prescribe any requirements or specific tools or methods for innovation activities. Kaya applicable no? uh, sa ating lahat, whatever type of organization we are. So in facing the threat of this pandemic, and other natural resources, no, nga pala, no, kakatapos lang ng, uh, ng uh, ano to, ilang days of rain natin, typhoon. We must be confident that we can all get through, through this. How well and quickly we get through it depends on us acting now and acting together as one bureaucracy. 
these are exceptional times and we need exceptional action. We hope that with this introductory course, you can take better action in continually improving your practices, approaches, and systems. We hope that you will take advantage of this opportunity to come up with valuable recommendations and conclusions that will be beneficial to your organizations. We look forward to open and constructive discussions and wish you a most successful session. Again, thank you and I hope everyone will have a productive learning session today. Muli magandang umaga and welcome everyone. Thank you very much, Ma'am Eva. Sige po, that's very inspiring words from Ma'am Eva. No po, uh, nakakatuwa that we're here. Tama po, ta tama po si Ma'am Eva. We're here for, ano po, uh, with decision makers. Yan. Thank you very much, Ma'am Eva. Let's give Ma'am Eva a virtual clap for her very inspirational uh, welcome remarks for us today. Okay, sige po. Let's get to know one another better. If I may request everyone to open your cameras, okay lang po ba? Kung okay naman po sa inyo, can you please? Oh, yan. Thank you so much, everyone. To our DAP project team, you may also open your ano po, cameras. There you go. Yan. So, nandito po tayo ngayon. Ang atin pong mga participants ngayon ay mga decision makers. Ang sabi ni Ma'am Eva, the challenge is for us to take action daw po in innovating our organization. And today, we will be getting to know the ISO uh, standard on innovation. And in the next session, we'll be getting to know the co-creation innovation process. But for the meantime, mag-hi-hello muna po tayo to everyone. Yan. Can you please open your microphones po and bumati naman po tayo ng good morning sa inyo pong favor uh, sa inyo pong dialect or sa any language that you want po. Yeah, can we try Sir Sir Husay? Good morning. Maayong buntag, ma'am. Maayong buntag, sir. Yes, Sige po. from Good morning. Elenita, good morning po. Sound check lang din. Hello, good morning. Ayan, good morning. So, May dialect ka ba ma'am? Nabaon pa? Uh, mayong, mayong buntag po sa tanan. Uh, I'm from Davao City, kaya bisaya po. Okay, buntag. mayong buntag. Thank you po ma'am. Let's proceed with attorney Jacqueline from PIDEA. Good morning ma'am. Hello, good morning. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Taga Bulacan, kaya Tagalog lang po. Tagalog. Thank you po. Ma'am Rogelia from MIA. Pamayong buntag din po. Bisaya po ako but I'm oh here in MIA God. Central Office. Okay. Thank you po Ma'am Rogelia. Okay. We have NTC Region 4B. Si Engineer. Yeah. Hello po. Good morning po. From Oriental Mindoro po. Oriental Mindoro. Thank you po si Engineer. Let me just look at the name. Char Charmaine. Charmaine. Okay, thank you po. Let's proceed to BFP sa ating pong maaga si Sir, Superintendent Jufel. Tama po, Brana Nola. Good morning, Sir. Good morning, ma'am. Buenos dias. Wow. <laughs> Buenos dias, sir. Thank you so much. Ayan. Sige po. Proceed po tayo sa ating po NCR. Ayan. Superintendent Samiliano. Yes, ma'am. Uh, magandang umaga po para Muntinlupa City Park Station. BFP NCR po. Okay, BFP NCR. Good morning po. Ayan. Uh, sa PGOSOR, si Sir Miguel. Ay, hello po. Marahin na aga po from Sarsagan po. Marahin na aga. Namiss ko yan, Miss Maan. Yung marahin na aga na yan. Lagi po kasi kami dati sa Sarsagan dahil PAP yes, handled the Sarsagan uh, yes, QMS. Nakasama ka pa namin dun, sir? Yes po, yes po. Okay. I'm and, uh, yung speaker pa namin si Sir Tony po. <laughs> ah, sa batch one ka, sir. Okay, yes, sir. sige po. Good morning and welcome. Sige, proceed po tayo si uh, Senior Inspector Anariza. Good morning po, ma'am. Good morning po, ma'am. Good morning, 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 ma'am. 
uh, representing uh, Chief Inspector Anarita Silo. Ah, I po. see. Sige po. Thank you po, ma'am. Ma'am, if you will be representing po Chief Inspector, maybe you'd like to rename na po according to your name na po so that we can address you better later. Thank you, ma'am, and good morning po. Ayan. Sige Thank po. You. Si Attorney... Ayan, ano kayang name ni sir? Medyo na ako curious tuloy ako. Attorney RRR, good morning po, sir. Tagad na ba si sir? Ayan, hello sir, good morning. Hello? Ayan, may concern yata si sir sa kanyang... Audio. Sige po, balikan natin. Sige po. At si Miss Cookie. Hi, good morning, Miss Cookie. Good morning po, Miss Hello, good morning. May baong ka ba sa aming dialect, Ma'am Cookie? Uh, uh, Chinese dialect. Hi, okay, Ma'am. Go. <laughs> oh, hello po. Maganda umaga po sa lahat. Ay, nahiya pa si Miss Cookie. Ano ba yung sa Chinese ang good morning? Ni Hao? Ah, hello ba yun? <laughs> So, uh, good morning. Okay, sige. Thank you and good morning, Ma'am Cookie. Okay, sige po. Uh, how about our other participants? We have from DPWH. Ayan, very, ano sa akin, close ang mga taga DPWH Central Office because DAP worked with their QMS certification for quite some time. Good morning po, Sir Ray Andrew Molano. Hello po. Good morning po everyone. Good morning. May baon ka po sa amin, sir? Na pagbate? Na dialect? Ah, ma'am, wala po. Uh, ah. Pure Tagalog po. Tagabulakan ah. po. Tagabulakan. Sige, may kasama pa na si Pantanina. Tagabulakan din. Sige po. And we have from GTTV. Yan. Pwede ka po ba namin makita, sir, ma'am? Yan sa GTTV. Ma'am Rihina Ruiz. Good morning. Ayan. Good morning. Anong pagbati mo para sa aming lahat, ma'am? Yung good morning po ba? Magandang ba? Ang kalindayan na sa amin, ma'am. Maarhay na aga? Tagalog lang po eh. Ah, Tagalog. De, magandang umaga lang. <laughs> magandang umaga. Sige po. Maraming salamat po, ma'am Sophia. Ayan. Sige po. Okay, I think uh, lahat po ng ating participants ay nakabati na. Yan, maraming salamat po for extending a good morning, your good morning greetings to us. Ngayon, let's try to see naman po kung kamusta po tayong lahat. Ayan, pwede po bang pa-open ulit ng cameras? Yan, and open your, ano po, your microphones, unmute yourselves. Uh, ano po ito? Ah, uh, Fill in the blanks. Yan. So, sa ating pong mga Zoom participants, you may fill in the blanks by answering. Sa ating pong YouTube participants, you can fill out the blanks by typing on the chat box po ng YouTube. Okay? So, sa first, ano po natin? Getting to know you. My breakfast today is... Ano pong breakfast mo today, Ma'am Anna Riza? Nag-breakfast ka ba, ma'am? Hindi pa po, ma'am. <laughs> Hindi pa po, ma'am. Hindi pa. Okay, air diet lang si ma'am. Yes, ma so, si Sir Miguel, oh, my breakfast today is? Wala pa po, ma'am. Hindi pa dumadating yung food panda. <laughs> <laughs> ang social, may food panda. Sige, yan ang pandemic life. Order is life. Sige po. Or delivery is life. Si, si Sir Superintendent, Uh, Edwin, uh, sir, magka-apelido tayo, no po, Vargas? Magka-mag-anak po ba tayo? Hindi <laughs> ko alam, taga-ano mama ko, yung Vargas namin, from Bicol. Pero dito, Bicol. Sige po, ang tatay ko po ay Davao. Yan. Sige okay. po, sir, your breakfast today is? Yes, ma'am, bread lang po, ma'am, tsaka coffee. Wow, sige po. Ma'am Rogelia, your breakfast today is? Simple, <laughs> simple lang. Plain rice and fish. <laughs> wow! Nakapag-breakfast talaga si Mom. May nagluto ng fish. Sir Anastasio, your breakfast today is? Tubig lang, Ma'am. <laughs> sir, uh, water diet ka. Sige, Ay, sir. Sige intermittent po. fasting, Ma'am. Mamaya pa Ay, alas 11. Yes. Okay. 
Ah, oh, okay. Sige po. Thank you po. Sige, kompleto ang umaga ko kung may clock. Kung ma'am Jacqueline. Kung may tubig. At saka mga nakangiting, magagandang nila lang nakatulad din yung lahat. Okay. Tayo ba yun, ma'am? Oo, oh, okay. siyempre. <laughs> Sige po. Si Engineer uh, Charmaine. Kompleto ang umaga mo, ma'am. Kung may... May kape po. Wow! Coffee lover si ma'am. Ma'am Ilinita, kompleto ang mm. umaga ko kung may... Uh, same with ma'am. Pag may kape and of course, pag nakapag-breakfast. Uh, nakapag-breakfast ka ba ma'am? Ano pong may... Yes! Ang breakfast ko ay napakasarap na galong, pritong galonggong and munggo. Wow! Oh, oh, my my of man. our colleague here. Ma'am Arlene. Wow! Nasa of ma 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 kita. Yes ma'am. Okay, sige po. On a scale of 1 to 5, your energy level po, Sir Ray Andrew. Sir Ray, are you there? Ayan, parang baka may concern po si Sir. Ayan, sige po. Ma'am Regina, on a scale of 1 to 5, your energy level po. Five. five. Wow, five. Very good. Ma'am Mega, ano po ang energy level nyo? My energy level for today, ma'am, is five. Wow, very good. Ang yes, katas na five. energy. Ma'am Jacqueline, um, one <laughs> five. Five po, five. Wow, Sir Anastasio, Sir Husay. Five, ma'am. Wow, oh, very good po. Parang tuloy-tuloy tayo hanggang mamaya. Sana pa-escalate ng pa-escalate. 5, 6, 7. Di ba? Pa-hyper ng pa-hyper. Ayan. Ako ay masaya kapag ako ay mayroong... Uh, Sir... Ed? Sir Husay? Kayo po ay masaya kapag kayo ay mayroong... Uh, kaya ka. Wow! No, kailangan ng misis nito si Sir. May payakap. Sige po. How about si Sir uh, Milano? Ah, sa Milano, sorry. Kayo po ay masaya kapag kayo ay mayroong? May pagkain, ma'am. <laughs> Sige, Sir. Gusto ko rin yan. Masaya din tayo dyan. Di ba, Miss Maan? Masaya din tayo dyan. Ma'am Rogelia, kayo po ay masaya kapag kayo ay mayroong? Kung may ginagawa, busy. Uh, okay. Sige po. Miss Cookie, kayo ay masaya kapag kayo ay mayroong? Coffee po, ma'am. Coffee din. Coffee lover din pala si Miss ano, Cookie. Sige po. Uh, last question. Pwede po bang pakisabi sa amin? You join this training because? Sige po. Can we start off with Sir Husay? Tapos, sir, tawag ka ng susunod kung sino yung gusto mag- uh, uh, Kasi bago sa akin, ma'am. Kaya ako sumali. Okay. It's a new topic for you. Thank yes, you, sir Husay. Sino pong gusto mong next na sumagot? Si Dondon, sa Miliano. Oh, sige po, sir. <laughs> you joined this training because? Uh, para mas ma-improve pa, ma'am, yung uh, knowledge namin sa ISO. Okay, sige po. Uh, sino pong next mong gusto sumagot, sir? Uh, si Sir Jofel Branyanola. Parang magkakilala kayo, sir, ha? Sir Namiss Jofel. Namiss mo talaga ako dun. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> uh, kasi may order. <laughs> Yun tayo, eh, may order. Eh. Para Mission po matuto sa ISO po, ma'am. Para oh. ma-improve po namin yung ano na sa opisina namin dito sa Region 9. Yan, yan ang order, ma-improve ang QMS sa Region 9. Sige po. Sino pong gusto mong next na sumagot, sir? Si Sir Vargas po. Sir, good morning. Sir, good morning. Good morning po, sir. Ayun, sir. Paras kami, sir. Eh. Ganun din, ma'am. Uh, may order kami na kailangan namin umatin para at least ma-share din namin, sir, kayo matutunan namin dito, ma'am. Okay, taga Bureau of Fire. Sige po. Next po, sino pong tatawagin natin, sir? Next po, na gusto niyo pong mag-tawag dito. Si Ma'am Ching. Ma'am Ching? Isa lang yun. Hello po. Um, sa akin po, hopefully, ma 
propagate pa natin yung innovation sa various government agencies po. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, next po, sino pong tatawagin mo, ma'am? Sino pong gusto mo pong next? I joined this training because sino pong next na gusto mong tawagin, ma'am? Ma'am? Ma'am Cheng? Ma'am Cheng? Attorney Ramos po. Sino po? Si Attorney Ramos. Si Sir Ramos. Si Attorney Ramos. Sige po. Attorney Ramos, are you there na po? Okay na po ba yung, yung ano, audio, microphone? Mm, looks like meron pa din pong concern si Attorney Ramos. Sige po, try po natin mag-pick ulit. Uh, si Ma'am Jackie Dean, you joined this training, Ma'am, because? I was really interested when I saw the word innovation. Importante ngayon eh. Tsaka yun nga, uh, tulad ng sinabi kanina, it's a new system. Okay, thank you, Ma'am. Sino pong next mo pong gusto mag-explain, mag-describe? Uh, si Ma'am Rogelia de la Torre. Ma'am Rogelia. I I joined this training because I was ordered. <laughs> I was you know, informed by the training of our personnel. So, dahil po we are the anchor of ISO din sa NIA. So, we were informed and we selected our participants. Uh supposed to be top management but of their inability kami na po. Okay. Yes. For the agency. For the agency. Sige po. Thank you so much po. Ayan. So I think ever, ever, everybody's here so that we will be able to improve our quality management system and learn. Ayan. Uh, yun pong, let's just check you in your pong, uh, expectations. We sent you a survey, a Google form, wherein we asked you your, we asked about your expectations from the course and from the speaker. Basically po, ang mga nilagay niyo po, uh, you'd like to gain deeper understanding of innovation management and how it can be applied to your agencies. Yeah, learn innovative approaches and techniques. You want to know more about benefits of innovation management. You want to know the purpose of innovation management system, IMS, and valuable inputs or innovation of a management system. You want to develop new ideas and learn applicable examples of innovation. So thank you so much for giving us your, uh, sharing your expectations with us. Basically, I'd like to, uh, well, um, I'd like to confirm with everyone that yes, we'll, we will be able to tackle all of your expectations because these course are intended for QMS leaders. Yan. Kaya po tayo nandito lahat, I we share a common perspective that we are all from an ISO 9001 certified organization. But since we're ISO certified, we do not stop there. As QMS leaders, as QMS representatives, we're focused on continually improving. And how do we want to improve that? Let's look at innovation. Basically, our course for today is um, the objectives are we will be able to explain, you'll be able to explain the importance of innovation as a strategy for QMS improvement. You'll be able to demonstrate the basic tools on co-creation in coming up with innovation projects. So the co-creation innovation project uh, process will be discussed in the second part of this course. Uh, you'll be able to describe the key concepts, principles, requirements of ISO 56002. So for that part, we'll be discussing it today. Okay. So th those are the so basically based on those um, objectives and those uh, the intention of our our course we'll be able to address all of your expectations. So we started at nine o'clock and we'll be ending at twelve o'clock with the discussions from our resource person on um, the concepts, tools, and techniques. We'll be having a break time at around ten o'clock to ten fifteen. Okay, and then we'll continue on August um, 18 for the next uh, part of this course. Okay, this uh, for the co-creation innovation process. Okay, so I hope that as part of our session, you were able to log in. 
uh, register in our attendance sheet. So we have YouTube uh, attendance and we have Zoom attendance sheet. So may I check on everyone? Pa thumbs up naman po kung kayo po ay nakapag attendance na. Yan. Sa ating pong mga YouTube participants, can I see a uh, confirmation sa chat box kung kayo po ay nakapag-attendance na? Yan. There you go. Thank you so much, everyone. Please remember that ha, because that is part of our monitoring for our uh, issuance of the certificate. For the course material, part of the session, let me just inform you that we have two approaches. We have the Google Classroom and the Google Drive link. Kapag hindi po kayo makapasok sa Google Classroom, wag po kayo ma-despair kasi meron pa po tayong Google Drive. Both links are shared with you through our chat box in YouTube and here in the uh, Zoom. Okay? So let me just check po, naka-access na po ba kayo sa classroom natin? Yan. Medyo mapili kasi si Google Classroom. So may option din tayo dyan, yung Google Drive. Pakisave na lang po ang link. Okay, so later we'll be giving you evaluation as part of the methodology of this training. Okay, on the side of our speaker, yeah, we have a very seasoned speaker, but I hope we'll be able to also share uh, your own knowledge and maybe your own experiences and insights. So, hindi lang po tayo ang hindi lang po ang ating resource person na speaker sana today. Sana lahat po tayo ay maging speaker in terms of dealing, interacting with each other. Okay? So, from the speaker, you expect po clear, understandable delivery of subject matter. You want us to deliver it in simple terms. You want professional, knowledgeable, and lively. Yan. Sige po, yun ang request natin kay Sir John to be very lively kasi ang energy level nyo ay 5. Dapat pataasin natin lagi. Okay? So, we, you want to demonstrate mastery of the topic? Uh, definitely naman po. And be able to respond to queries. If you have queries, just inform us through the chat box or raise your hand because we can call you immediately and interact with you even during the discussion so that we can be more responsive to your queries, all right? Sige po, you expect the speaker to deliver the course uh, who are new to the ISO standards. Sige po, we'll try to, ano din po, we'll try to bridge to the new, ano po, new people on ISO 9001. Okay, and share practical approaches. Sige po, our speaker, uh, our our speaker for today is a very seasoned uh, seasoned uh, expert on innovation management system. In fact, he was also the one we that handled the innovation management a full course, one day course, introductory course last year. But aside from our speaker, whom I will introduce a little bit later, let me introduce to you our project team. Again, I'm Angela Vargas, a project manager and facilitator for our training today. Let me call on our project uh, staff and co-facilitator, Ms. Mary Ann Mayo. Hi, Ms. Maan. Good morning, Ms. Maan, ano pong baon mong good morning dialect for us? Ay, maayong buntag sa imong tanahin. Bisaya, tama po ba? Bi uh, taga Bisaya, ba? Ms. Maan? Pili, <laughs> oy. Kay gamay rin kung Bisaya lang. Sige <laughs> po. Thank you, Ms. Maan. So if you have concerns or ano pa, questions, feel free to chat Ms. Maan po. Okay, sige po. Um, we have another beautiful lady, project team natin, si Miss Len Ramirez. Miss Len? Good morning, Ma'am Len. Good morning, Manilenya po. So, Tagalog lang. Ma, ma, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Okay. Ano, uh, salamat po sa pagdalo. Pasay Beauty si Ma'am Lynn. Okay? Yes, it's from the beautiful city of Pasay. The thorn among the beautiful ladies. The thorn talaga. Eh, no? The thorn among the roses. Sir Peds, Pedrito Garcia. Si, Pe si Sir Peds po ang ating very expert sa YouTube na staff natin sa YouTube. Sir Peds, good morning. Yan, di tayo mababati ni Sir Peds. Sir Peds, batiin mo na lang kami dyan sa chat box ng YouTube. Okay? So... Uh, ang ating pong mga resource person, part of the project team, ay si Sir Adrian Ramirez and si Ms. Leanne Kim Jane Lozanes. Sila po ang ating speaker para po dun sa co-creation innovation 
process for innovation dun po sa second part. So for today, we have with us no other than Professor Janilo Del Rosario. He is a career management consultant, resource person, and subject matter expert from the Development Academy of the Philippines. He's been working with us on different with the different offices and centers of the academy, the Graduate School of Public and Development Management, Productivity and Development Center, and COE, Center of Excellence on Public Sector Productivity. He is a certified business mentor, coach, and technical expert of, uh, and thus continuing consulting training and research work for various business organizations, government institutions, not-for-profit organizations, and professional associations. Uh, likewise, he is a postgraduate and higher education professor at several colleges and university uh, for like University of the Philippines. Ang ang kanya pong fields of expertise ay syempre knowledge management, yung session po namin kahapon, siya rin po yung resource person natin, organizational learning, syempre ISO 9001, management system, Business Process Management, Performance Management, Organizational Development and Design. Siyempre itong course natin, Innovation Management, Change Management, Evidence-Based Management, and a lot more of his expertise. Sir John, which we fondly call him, Professor John, holds two master's degrees in technology management and human resource development from the University of the Philippines, where he also graduated cum laude. He is a lifetime member of the PIGAMA Mo International Honor Society. So baka ka member niyo po si sir. <laughs> His affinity with UP started all the way back to kindergarten. And personally, he's a philomath and system thinker. Kaya swak na swak po si sir para sa isang innovation management. So without further ado, let me call on. Nandiyan na po sa ating screen si Professor John. Good morning, Professor John. Good morning, Ange, and good morning, everyone. Thank you for the introduction, and I'm glad to be here with you guys. Uh, we're going to have a half-day session. Okay, until 12 lang naman tayo. So we made the session uh, full-packed with information that you need to understand about ISO 56002 or the newest uh, standard on innovation management system. So just a little bit of uh, background here, okay? Um, before we start, um, right now, uh, the International Organization for Standardization is in the midst of developing ISO 56001, okay? So it's under development. Um, on top of what we're going to be discussing today, yung ISO 56002 2019, okay? Um, kasi yung ISO 56001 can be used for certification. So in other words, organizations can be certified to innovation management using that particular standard, okay? Pero it's still under development. So in the meantime, we'll focus on ISO 56002 2019, Okay, kasi nando rin yung mga guidelines and we are predicting in a way um, na more or less the contents of ISO 56001, yung underdeveloped na standard with ISO, uh, will be somehow similar to ISO 56002 2019 which we're going to be discussing today. And another note is that uh, kami from the Graduate School of Public and Development Management, so GSPDM, Dito sa DAP, we're also in the midst of developing a certificate course on innovation management. So in the works pa lang siya, hopefully, itong last quarter of the year. Baka ma-offer na namin. So if you're interested, just a keep tab on our website para to, to know the announcement with regard to that particular course if you want to have further knowledge on innovation management. Yeah. So, so we can start... Um, Sir John, I think they're all ready. Thank you for the quick introduction. Would you like to share your screen now? Yeah, yeah. Ito, ito, yeah. Thank you, yeah. Ayan. Sir John, maybe I can request everyone to please open their cameras. Ayan. Uh, tayo po ay pwede pong mag-unmute. Uh, just try to ano lang po, manage ourselves for background noises so that we can foster better interaction. Yeah. 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 We encourage everyone to please open their cameras for better interaction. Uh, inform us if you have insights 
um, queries or clarifications. Yan. So are we ready, everyone? Ready na po ba kayo to start the session? Ready. Thank you, po. Sir John. Back Thank to you, Angela. Yeah. So tama sinabi ni Ange. Okay. So we want the session to be interactive. So it's a very short session. It's a very short webinar. So we want to also make it uh, short and sweet. Yung ganun nga, di ba? So uh, the official title of our webinar is uh, Introductory Course on Innovation Approaches Using ISO 56000 2019 or the Innovation Management System. So in this case, we're not really forgetting ISO 9001 2015 Kasi ang intent nitong course na to is to apply ISO 6002 2019 as a guideline to further improve, to further enhance yung certified na quality management system natin sa organizations natin. So, i-connect natin yun later on with uh, your quality management system. Okay? So, more or less naman na-cover na to. Let's, let me just reiterate yung uh, description ng course natin. Uh, it is a half-day exploration on innovating the Certified Quality Management System or QMS of your organization. Uh, it's important that although you can have your own innovation management system, but nagkakaroon mas ng, ng synergy okay, between the innovation processes of your organization and your own QMS if we're going to apply innovation approaches to your QMS, okay? So in a way na, na enhance nung ISO 56000 to 2019 yung quality management system nyo. So it identifies process improvements and innovations that assure sustained success and continual improvement of the QMS. If you're familiar with ISO 9001 2015, di ba may clause doon, particularly clause 10 on improvement, right? Pero very short. Parang tipid na tipid sa provision, di ba mga, mga one paragraph ba yun or two, line, two sentences lang or something. Okay, so um, kasi ang intent lang naman doon is to tell organizations once you get certified to, to the standard, okay, um, over time you have to continuously or continually improve your system. Okay, you don't stop being certified. Okay, so somehow with the advent of... Um, innovation management system or applying innovation approaches, um, this will extend further or this will give more details on how to continually improve your QMS. Okay? Kaya very timely rin yung pagkakadevelop ng uh, innovation management system back in 2019 kasi it's uh, one, uh, one reference guide that you can hold on to to do this uh, yung cross 10 nga, this 9001, which is uh, continual improvement of the QMS. And finally, it shows how improvements and innovations are applied to the QMS. That's the bottom line. I mean, learning innovation management system is one thing, right? But the more important thing is that after learning what it is, now how do you apply it? So that's also what we're going to be tackling for today. Okay, so yon. And then we're going, hopefully, uh, we get to accomplish this three objectives na somehow na cover man sa description kanina ni Ms. Ange. First, we want to describe the practice of business process management and how it is applied to the your certified QMS. Okay? So, um, we have to zero in on something para ma-apply natin yung quality management, uh, yung, yung, sorry, yung innovation management, right? And, we, and when we talk about applying innovation management on the QMS, Okay? Then we have to look at your processes. We, look, we have to look at your practices. Kasi yun naman talaga ang focus ng quality management system. So if we're going to look at innovation approaches, i-apply natin dapat yun sa processes and practices nyo na certified na sa ISO 9001-2015. Okay? And uh, it just came across my mind right now. Uh, before, kasi up for review na, yung ISO 9001-2015 sa ISO. Kasi as you all know, uh, every five years dapat ina-update yung mga ISO standards, including ISO 9001-2015. Since 2015 pa siya, uh, dapat nung 2020, na-revise na siya, na-update na siya. So medyo mabagal lang yung proseso nila, 
pero uh, recently they announced that um, it's already reviewed and revised. So uh, and they didn't make any changes. So that means, sabi nga nila, the 2015 version of ISO 9001 is still very much relevant, still very much current. So magko continue siya. Kasi ganun naman yung ISO eh. Um, Ni-review every five years yung mga standards, pero kung, kung wala namang kailangang i-update, kung talagang very relevant pa, they just maintain the standard. So in the case of ISO 9001-2015, uh, kung certified na kayo, that's well and good. Kasi okay, uh, I mean, current pa naman yung standard na ginagamit nyo. Kasi otherwise, if there's a new version, you have to get into the transition, di ba? Transition from the the previous version to the new version. Like what we did before with 2008 version of ISO 9001. Okay, so ngayon, um, you can focus on applying innovation management, right? Because you don't have to worry about your 9001 or your QMS because current pa naman yung standard. Okay, number two, okay, we want to explain how process improvements and innovations are applied to the QMS because that's the bottom line when we talk about innovating or applying innovation approaches to your quality management system. We zero in on the processes and the practices that are found in your QMS. So when we say we want to improve the, the system, we're actually improving processes and of course practices that are aligned to the processes. And finally, number three, we want to uh, propose process improvements and innovations to the QMS. Hopefully, this webinar will give you ideas on how to improve further yung certified nyo ng mga processes and practices. And August 18, yung part 2 nitong webinar natin, uh, which will be handled by the Innovation Lab, di ba? Uh, as mentioned by Angie earlier, um, mas ma, ma further elaborate pa, elucidate on what we're trying to say here. Kasi yung particular webinar yon is more on the application, okay? Application of the innovation tools, innovation approaches. So you get to learn that on August 18. So don't forget to join us for that particular webinar. So it's a it's an extension, it's a continuation of what we're going to be having today. Okay. Tsaka kung sakaling hindi ko ma-achieve yung objectives na yun, di ba, they, they, will, they will further, ano, further discuss these uh, objectives. So, eto mga topics to be covered na nandun rin sa program na finlash ni Ange kanina. So, of course, we have to look at what QMS is and then uh, you're, you're clarifying your ISO certified um, QMS, okay? And then since we're going to be focusing on processes, we have to also um, make sure that we, uh, we we're on the same page with regard to how we look at processes. And then we look at the, the field or the practice of business process management. That's important because uh, since we're going to be focusing on processes, might as well look at the, the, the field of study for processes, which we call BPM or business process management. Okay, and then we're going to have some learning activity. It's just a discussion, okay, later on, para to get your interaction with this particular, this particular webinar, okay. And then we move on to what we know about innovation, okay, how we can define it, and why do we need to innovate our respective QMSs, okay. And then some innovation paradox. And then uh, we're going to close the session by looking at further details on innovations. We're also going to clarify what continual improvement means using the PDCA cycle, which I think you're very much familiar with um, since you're already uh, most of you, or if not all of you are, your organizations are um, ISO 9001 2015 certified. And then we're going to mention some innovation tools that you can apply. And then we're going to show you the roadmap, okay? and how to innovate your QMS. And then some implementation notes and some other standards that you can use as reference. And I, I'll, I'll mention some good practices that I observe as I do my consulting. And then some challenges along the way. And then the next steps that you can do after this webinar and then to recap everything, okay? So since I mentioned earlier, half day lang tayo, might as well get on with the discussion. So ito, very fast na to, kasi alam niyo na to eh. Pero just to put the discussion in proper perspective, 
let's go back, let's review what we know about a quality management system, di ba? as provided by ISO 9000 2015. So pati yan, pati yung dictionary or vocabulary ng ISO 9001, current din. Okay, kasi hindi naman binago yung 9001, so ganun yung ISO 9000 din, 2015. Okay, so according to the document, a QMS comprises activities by which the organization identifies its objectives and determines the processes and resources required to achieve desired results. The QMS manages the interacting processes and resources required to provide value and realize results for relevant interested parties. Okay? So very clear from that definition that the focal point of your quality management system are the processes. The processes found in your organization. Kung may sinesertify, yun ang sinesertify. But of course, there's also a mention of resources because the processes cannot move by themselves, right? Resources have to be provided to make sure that processes are performed accordingly. More notes, uh, the QMS enables top management to optimize the use of resources considering the long and short-term consequences of their decisions. That's why for this particular webinar, we invited decision makers, kung pwede nga top management, because even applying innovation management, okay, we need the involvement, the commitment of top management, much like with your QMS, di ba? Uh, as you can remember, um, hindi na require yung QMR or the quality management representative because ISO wants top management to be hands-on, to be so involved in the processes of the organization, especially when the organization intends to get certified to the standards. So the same principle applies to innovation management. Okay, We want top management to be there because we need the resources and it's only top management who can who can authorize the use of resources para ma fund para ma certify yung innovation management system nyo, right so yon a qms provides the means to identify actions to address intended and unintended consequences in providing products and services so ganun pa rin naman ang logic with regard to uh, the qms di ba? Uh, you have to address the needs of your stakeholders or what we call interested parties Okay, and the processes have to be attuned to those um, to those needs. Okay. Okay, this is what we expect if your QMS, your your organization's QMS is already certified to ISO 9001-2015. Kaya um, sinasabi naman to sa ISO 56002 2019 sa innovation, hindi naman required na dapat certified na yung ISO yung yung QMS nyo to ISO 9001-2015. It's not a prerequisite. It's not a requirement. In other words, you can go straight to getting certified to ISO if ever, eventually, 56001, even if yung QMS nyo wala pa talaga. Kasi the idea here is that yung innovation management system, okay, can be uh, established, can be designed separately if you want to have a separate innovation management system. That means this system will only focus on the way you, the way you produce, the way you churn out mga innovation approaches. So it could be a separate system from your QMS. Okay? So... Pag lumabas na nga yung sinasabi ko kanina na ISO 56001, you can have that innovation management system na established sa organization nyo to be certified to that standard. Okay? Also, which is a more, for me, ah, it's a more um, synergizing na, na approach is to apply innovation management on your existing certified quality management system. That's my take on this. In fact, that's the essence of this webinar. We're starting off, we're taking off from your certified quality management system and then applying innovation management in that system. So here, an approach is different. You don't have a separate innovation management system, but you're actually applying innovation management 
on your QMS. Gusto nyo mag-innovate sa quality management system nyo, which makes your QMS a uh, systemic, systematic, synergistic system as it is institutionalized and personalized by each and every one in the organization. And practices are aligned with these processes. Diba? Kasi pa nag-introduce kayo ng innovation sa processes nyo, magkakaroon ng changes yon, Right? And according to ISO 9001-2015, uh, okay lang magkaroon ng changes for as long as these changes undergo audit and management review. Right? Pwede naman talaga yon, Kasi hindi uh, ini-expect naman talaga ng ISO na over time, pwedeng mag-change yung quality management system nyo kahit certified na. So just for for you to continue certif uh, the certification or the the your QMS being certified, kailan mag undergo lang siya nung nung tamang processes. Meaning, kailan audit, kailan may management review before application ng corrective action. Because we expect that when you introduce innovations to your quality management system, there are going to be changes, right? Mm. So these changes have to undergo audit, have to undergo review from management, new management review, before magkaroon ng mga corrective actions, right? Mm. So yon. So documentation, recording, internal audits, corrective actions, and management reviews are intentional and integrated with the organization's operations. Ganun pa rin. Especially kung intent nyo nga, as I said earlier, you're going to apply innovation management to your certified QMS. So you don't have to change anything. Dadagdagan nyo lang with innovation management. So you still follow the flow of what you're doing with your QMS. Okay. Uh, ganun pa rin uh, with the QMS, di ba? Ginagamit yung process approach. So with the innovation management system, process approach then. So we want to see yung, kung ano yung process na gagamitin nyo for innovation management, these processes will produce the results. Ganun naman eh, di ba? Ganun naman yung logic rin with ISO 9001. Kaya ginagamit ng ISO 9001 is the process approach kasi sinasabi doon na uh, if you focus on processes instead of results, okay? Instead of results. Hindi sinasabi na hindi importante results ng ISO. Of course, the results are still very important because they are the reckoning. They are they are the ways to check if you're if you're doing it correctly, if you're heading the right direction. It's the it's a results are evidence. Eh. Will show you the, the the results will show you na tama tama naman yung QMS tama naman yung processes nyo. But according to ISO, kaya ang focus on processes kasi with processes you can. Ongoing yun eh, di ba? You can still do something about the processes. But if you focus on the results, it's already done. You cannot do anything about it. That's it, right? But if you focus on processes, pwede pang mag-change, pwede yung pa i-modify to make it better or to correct it kung correction ang kailangan. Yun nga lang, sinasabi na ISO, you have to make sure that the processes are tightly connected, tightly linked to the results. In other words, the process have to be designed, have to be practiced in such a way that these processes will guarantee that the results coming out from these processes are the results that you are looking for, that you intend to have. Meaning, the results that are going to address the needs of your interested parties of your stakeholders. Diba ganun naman yung logic? You start with the needs and expectations of the stakeholders. And you have to have processes within your QMS to address those needs. So yung results na yung expect natin should come from uh, the processes na yung establish natin. Okay? So ganun rin yung logic with innovation management. You're reminded that, yeah, you can change the process for as long as these process are still responsive to the results, to the needs that you're looking for, okay, that you intend to have in your organization. So you still follow the logic of the PDCA as popularized, as conceptualized by W. Edwards Deming, diba? 
yung plan do check act <clears throat> very useful pa rin siya sa innovation management okay so it's still evidence based as we mentioned earlier because nando pa rin naman yung focus on results di ba despite the fact you focus on your processes kailangan pa rin naka-connect yon sa results okay so ganun pa rin yung logic processes practices corrections improvements and innovations okay kasi ang pagkakaiba noon um yung corrections is making sure that your system, your processes are aligned to the standards. Kaya nga may corrective actions. You're correcting your processes to align them to the standard, to ISO 9001-2015. Diba? But sinasabi naman ISO, you can introduce improvements to make it better. And in our case, since we're talking about innovations in this webinar, we also have to include innovations kasi later on we'll clarify the difference between mere improvements lang and innovations okay so yun so sabi nga natin from the start ang focus is on processes kasi ang tanong palagi yeah we're going to innovate pero what are we going to innovate you're going to innovate the processes in your QMS in your quality management system so what is a process anyway okay it's just a set of interrelated or interactive activities that use inputs to deliver an intended result. Diba? It's a tool para ma-convert nyo yung inputs nyo into outputs or into results. Ano yung results? Ano yung outputs? Ito yung kailangan ng stakeholders nyo, ng interested parties, ng organization nyo, right? So, dapat yun ang processes nyo na nagko-comprise ng quality management system. Okay? So the same logic applies to innovations. Kasi uh, innovations have to go through processes. Okay? At ang innovate nyo rin is the process themselves. So it's the basic unit of analysis when you look at your QMS, di ba? Yung processes nyo. That's why you also have to look at process control. We can classify processes into three. Yung core processes nyo, then the support process, and the management processes. Yung core processes, these are directly connected to your products and services. These are also the processes directly connected to your strategic thrust or your mandate ng agency nyo. Okay? So they're called core processes kasi by hook or by crook kailangan yung gawin. Di ba? Para ma-accomplish yung mandate ng agency nyo. Para ma-accomplish yung strategic thrusts, yung vision, mission, core values, yung strategies ng organization nyo. Di ba? Kaya tinatawag siya na core or you focus on the operations of your agency, of your organization. Those are your core, core processes. While on the background, on, at the back end, you can find your support processes. So usually, the support process will be your uh, procurement, your HR, your finance, accounting, ganon, di ba? Na very common for all organizations. Lahat ng organizations may HR. Lahat ng government, government organizations may procurement. May back, di ba? Di ba? May bids and awards committee oh. Lahat merong um, finance. These are very basic. These are common. But these are support processes. They are not directly connected to the mission, vision, to the strategic thrust of your organization. Okay? They are just indirectly connected. I'm not saying they are not important. Huh? Okay? Obviously, they, they take care of the back end of your organization, the operations at the back end. They support nga. The, 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 the term itself, it refers to support. Kasi without them, di ba, babagsak yung core. Di ba? Imbis na yung core process, nakafocus lang on the direct processes to serve your stakeholders, to address the needs of your stakeholders, your, 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 your interested parties. They're also busy with the administrative stuff na kailangan ginagawa sana ng support processes. 
kung wala yung support processes. Di ba? So, kung kulang ng tao yung uh, yung nasa frontline nyo, sila pa mag mag-aabala na mag-hire ng mga tao kasi wala kayong HR. Any support process na pinoprovide ng HR. Okay? So, so the two go hand in hand obviously yung core processes and support process pero we're making that distinction kasi usually um pag yung organization hindi naman talaga niya papa certify yung buong organization di ba kasi hindi naman ni require ng ISO na para pa certify kayo yung buong organization it could be just a particular process a particular unit di ba ganun naman yung sinasabi sa ISO okay so ang advice don usually um if you're not going to have your entire organization certified and you have to choose the processes that you have to to submit the certification uh, better that you start with your core processes because obviously they are the ones which are directly connected to the strategic thrust to the, so ganun rin yung logic pagdating sa innovation okay if you're going to be innovating your processes might as well start with the core processes kasi ang logic doon uh, whatever innovations that you introduce in your core processes definitely magagalaw yung support processes they will follow because the support processes have to be aligned with the core processes and not the other way around because that's so weird that um, the core processes are being modified because of the requirements of the support processes. Diba? Ang logic is that the support process, yung HR, yung finance, accounting, yung purchasing or procurement, dapat nakalign sa core processes nyo. So in other words, yeah, merong, merong field jobs, may uh, pro procurement law, pero we have to remind ourselves that um, it's just a support process. It should not get in the way do sa mandate ng institution natin, ng agency natin. Kasi narinig ko minsan, ano eh, um, hindi na itutuloy yung project kasi may mga problem with uh, with back. Di ba? Nadidelay yung bidding kasi may failure of bid kasi kulang ng mga bidders. Di ba? That's getting in the way of our work. Hindi natin magawa pa yung project kasi nga, uh, nag-fail yung bid. When in the first place, Hindi ko naman sinabi, is circumvent or is shortcut niyo yung procurement law or yung procurement process. Kasi nga, may meron talagang regulated process na ng, ng back. Pero if it's getting in the way of our work, di ba, paano naman yun? Paano naman yun? Like, another one is uh, sa budget. Okay, sa budget. Uh, di ba, pag internationally funded yung project, uh, hindi naman talaga directly dumidiretsyo yung fund from the international agency, international organization, dun sa implementing agency. Di ba? Kadalasan, kala dumaan ng DBM. Kaya parang bumabagal lalo yung proseso kasi may sariling process pa ang DBM. Bago dumat, bago i-release ng DBM sa inyo, sa agency, implementing, implementing agency, yung, yung fund to run the project, to run the program, which I don't get. So, so we have to be clear about yung core at saka support. Pero pumapasok rin yung third type of process, yung management. What do you call that? Yung mga quality assurance, yung supervision, di ba? Monitoring, review, di ba? Management yun eh. Okay? So dapat those processes are also in place to make sure that the core processes and support process are running smoothly are running accordingly. So you have to know all these intricacies because well, you'll be introducing innovations. Eh? So that, that means you start with introducing innovations the core processes. Nyo. Ano ba pwedeng innovate natin dito? Then the, the innovations and support process will follow suit. Right? But don't forget to also introduce innovations sa management processes nyo para makasunod siya to the core and support. Kasi di ba, the management processes are supposed to oversee the core and support processes. Oh, di ba, sabi natin kasi ina-apply yung innovation sa processes nyo. Pero there's a logic, or there's a, there's a method, there's a logic to the madness, so to speak, di ba? 
for you to maintain your sanity. Okay? Let, let's do it step by step, deliberately. Okay? Huwag sabay-sabay, may hilo lang tayo. Okay? Mas okay na deliberate yung approach kesa one time, big time, minamadali nyo. Okay? So there. So we have to look into the practice of BTM or what we call business process management. Over time kasi, nag-develop na rin yan. So may sariling field of practice, field of study na yung business process management. At si Michael Hammer nga, yung, uh, one of the precursors, uh, not the rapper na si MC Hammer, no? si Michael Hammer, although Michael din ata si MC Hammer, pero we're more interested with uh, Michael Hammer, yung uh, scholar. <laughs> so siya yung start nung uh, study, yung, yung systematic and disciplined study of business processes and over time na, 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 nakilala siya as business process management. Siya nga, si Michael Hammer na siya yung kinukonsider na guru on business process management. And according to him, if you look at the field of study of business process management, since we're talking about processes, di ba? Uh, it, it is comprised of four, four interrelated processes, namely process design, process implementation and control, process measurement and evaluation, and process improvement. Wait that. Yeah. Although, okay, these processes are enumerated distinctly na parang hiwahiwalay siya, iba-iba siya, no? Dinistinguish natin. Pero sabi ko nga kanina, these are interrelated. And in fact, they follow the flow of process management from process design until process improvement. Pero, if you want to be deliberate nga, sabi nga natin, if you want to be systematic, deliberate in terms of your approach to process management, you have to look at each process separately. Okay, discuss natin na. Pag process design, it's how you sequence, how you arrange your processes within your organization. Yung end-to-end -end na processes. Siyempre sa, like, like, um, um, in typical government agencies, di ba, you start with uh, procurement. Kasi kailangan nyo ng supplies. Kailangan nyo ng resources. Kailangan nyo ng consultants. Di ba? Kailangan nyo ng mga service providers. Di ba? Uh, so you, you do it via procurement. So you start there. O pagkatapos, anong gagawin doon? Pag may, may, pag nakapag-award ng bids, may, may bid winners na, di ba? May mga, may provider na kayo. Okay. So then you come up with a work plan, yung ganun. So dapat naka-design na kagad 'yon. Parang ano, yung yung RA 11032, the ease of doing business and efficient public service delivery. 'Yon. Kaya ko sinasabi 'yan, that's my favorite kasi 'yun yung Republic Act na talagang diretso sa tao na nararamdaman nila yung improvement dapat for as long as the agency is faithful to that RA ha. 'Di ba? Kasama lahat doon, how to make the processes faster, more uh, to cut the, the red tape, diba? including the, the need for signatories, the, acceptabi, the, the acceptance or validity of e-signature or digital signatures, so on and so forth. Diba? I think it's a very good RA. Again, that's the design diba? of the processes. Sinasabi na um, it starts with coming up with a citizen's charter for every agency. Dapat naka-announce na yan. So the public knows ano yung kailangan, ano yung mga documentary requirements, ganyan, ganyan. So, hindi the fault ng agency kung kulang-kulang yung requirements sa sasabit mo. Pero on the other way around, kung compliant naman yung client, yung public, di ba? Doon sa mga pinublish nyo na documentary requirements, everything is in order, Nasa inyo na yung bola, nasa agency na. So dapat hindi bumagal yung proseso nyo, di ba? Kasi may mga prescribed ng uh, processes. Uh, tapos ano, um, merong, ano, merong um, penalties pa, may sanctions pa if you don't follow that. Yung ganun. So I think it's a very good Republic Act. So that's why I'm happy with RA 11032. Pero that's the design. Kaya nga sinasabi ni Michael Hammer, separate yung process implementation and control, yung second natin dito sa screen, di ba? Process implementation and control. Kasi nagkakaiba pa rin yun. Maganda yung design ng process, pero yung mga tao nyo naman, 
hindi sumusunod doon sa process. So, iba yung implementation. Iba nangyari sa implementation, iba nangyari sa control. Di ba ganun naman sa ISO 9001? Di ba, ino-audit sa stage 1 yung processes na documented. Pero sa stage 2 audit, titignan yung practices naman. Oh, okay naman yung processes mo. Pero kamusta naman yung practices? Kamusta naman yung performance ng mga tao nyo? Sumusunod ba doon sa maayos ng process? So, in other words, we cannot guarantee that if even if the processes are in order, pero wala naman sa order, disorder naman yung mga tao nyo because of their practices, because they don't follow the practices. Ay, sorry, they don't follow the... Their practices do not follow the processes you designed in the first place or you prescribed in the first place. Like yung pinaprescribed sa RA 1-10-32. Sinasabi na, the signatories kailangan nandun sa agency or dapat they make themselves available para hindi maging dahilan na wala kasi yung signatory. Oh. Eh, pero kung wala yung signatory, hindi yung sinusunod yung RA. Di ba? Di ba sabi, if you're a signatory, you always have to be available. Or i-accept na ng agency yung e-signature, yung digital signature. Right? Hmm. Pero minsan ginagamit na dahilan yun eh. Narinig ko palagi, eh, wala yung signatory eh. That should not be a reason anymore, di ba, sa RA 1-10-32. The signatory should always be there. Kung wala man siya, like, let's say, out of the country or uh, incapacitated or, or may sakit talaga, may COVID or whatsoever, di ba dapat may proxy or may substitute, may authorized signature na replacement or something. So anyway, oh, tapos separate separate uh, practice pa according to Michael Hammer yung process measurement and evaluation kasi dito talagang objectively tinitingnan kung maayos ba yung process or not right mm. and then of course sabi nga rin niya uh, yung last na process process improvement is looking at the entirety the overall situation and then improving it dito na pumapasok yung sinasabi nating innovation Kasi definitely, if you introduce that, it will change the entire process. Kasi usually, when you talk about innovation, it's looking at the process in its entirety and introducing changes to the processes. Okay? So that's the practice of this process uh, management. Okay? This process management or BPM. Tapos, according to, yan, kay Michael Hammer back in 2007. Okay? So, we'll finish this first before we have the break. Okay, so ito, what we call the process enablers, sabi niya, these are the things that you have to take into account, much like factors affecting processes, yun, yun the way the process is designed, and then yung mga metrics that you can use in measuring kung the processes are performing accordingly, according to your standards, according to your expectations, then the people who work on those processes, what we call the process performers, and then the resources that you provide in terms of infrastructure kasi di ba sabi nga natin from the start sinabi din ng ISO di ba na hindi tatakbo yung process niyan kung walang resources so you need to be you need to have the process infrastructure in place the technology the equipment the machines the you know the the layout the facility okay and then the process owner the one supervising the entire process from start to finish from end to end Siya may responsibility nyo. Kaya tawag sa kanya, process owner, kung magtuturoan man tayo, sino may kasalanan, dapat yung process owner yon Okay? And then... Time check? Yes, yes. Uh -oh. Shall we pause for... Ay, oh, sige, sige, sige. Oh, so yes. we can, oh, sige. We'll, we'll continue with this one after the break. That module, all right? So, okay, sige po. Uh, feel free po to close your video cams for the meantime and mute yourselves. Let's pause for a 10-minute break. I'll play a video and once the video stops, we will be resuming the session. Thank you. We are now faced with a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world. This is the era of disruptive changes, 
information overload, and lightning pace developments. This is the age of innovation. Because of these rapid changes in the globe, the needs of the people changed as well. New mindsets were formed as accessibility and online transactions become integral parts of daily lives. Having different platforms of commerce and communication, people have radically shifted to digitization and virtual activities. This radical trend has resulted to an inertia in national development and a widened gap with the government and the general public. Coupled with a diminishing public trust, today's leaders are faced with the greater challenge of bringing the government closer to the people. Innovation is the only way forward. More than just giving what the citizens need, the government should give what the people deserve. Thus, the birth of the Public Sector Productivity Innovation Laboratory has become imperative to equip the public servants with innovative skills as they become part of future fit organizations. Along with integrity, transparency, accountability, and efficiency, Innovation Laboratory adds a key ingredient in fortifying the pillars of good governance, a new culture of innovation. Hello, my name is Eno, and this is the PSP Innovation Laboratory in the Philippines one of the country's efforts in preparing the nation through innovation programs in the public sector. We gather small cross-functional teams to collaborate, discuss, and develop new technologies, products, solutions, or programs. We unleash the skill to adapt experimental and innovative methods as the different agencies tackle social, political, and organizational issues. Our main objectives are to enhance citizen satisfaction, improve government efficiency, and strengthen public sector innovation. InnoLab is a venue for knowledge sharing, creative thinking, and discovery of cutting-edge techniques to address public sector productivity. Our role is to create a culture of innovation among public organizations with the ultimate goal of creating a pool of innovators engaging in interagency and sectoral collaborations. InnoLab will be the catalyst of national development through innovation, a venue to stimulate out-of-the-box thinking and the moving force of implementation and scale-up. Innovation Laboratory follows a citizen-centered approach in coming up with innovation initiatives. We call it the co-creation innovation process. Let me show you how this works. Co-creation is really not hard to do. All you need is a group of people gathering together towards a specific objective. Starting with identifying roles and objectives, the innovation challenge was framed. The, the decision point that we used was to choose an innovation that would that affects so many customers and, and we should do everything to make them uh, comfortable, uh, of less cost on their part, fast and most efficient service. Empathy is a tool that will uh, allow you to go deeper inside the system. Empathy will lead you to frame up an innovation. It will, it will lead you to gather insights and information. And it will also lead you to plan how to implement the solutions that you have in mind. The data gathering process is a complicated phase. Digging deeper does not only allow you to understand the problem, but also makes you understand the pains and gains of the stakeholders. Getting into the, the data gathering, tapos yung talagang as in naka-immerse ka doon, kahit man lang a few hours na nandoon kami sa branch, we're able to see kung ano yung mga dapat na i-improve on our own, yung kung ano yung mga dapat na hinihingi ng members. So we're looking at it at the member's perspective. The birth of an innovative idea comes from the identification of alternative solutions through creativity tools and techniques where wild and crazy ideas are encouraged. Creative thinking actually allowed us to look into ways that uh, rather we would not be able to do in a normal thinking process. We were able to use wild ideas 
take uh, inspiration from them and apply us apply it in our situation uh, that we wouldn't even think would be applicable. Innovation does not stop in the mind. Prototyping is where an innovative idea is being brought to life. I think uh, prototyping is very important, especially in product development or in, in innovation. The prototyping is uh, the best sample to show our stakeholders that we do understand what they express to us, that they convey to us. And as a response, we made these prototypes. This is just the start, okay? What happens next will depend on you. And implementation is really key in any innovation efforts. We are lucky enough that we have the, PN, the P, public sector productivity to make it happen, to make this possible because they are provided us with the uh, solutions to unlock this uh, problem that our members, our stakeholders are encountering. At Innovation Laboratory, we aim for a sustainable future of innovation. We believe that the possibilities are endless and that progress is a continuous cycle of growth. It really applies to uh, real-life situations. We're in, uh, in the office. We, we are uh, really bound by uh, time and pressure. So, uh, pinaka-memorable sa akin are those mga 5 minutes, 10 minutes na activities wherein you have to give your all, all of your effort. Those ideas uh, with the collaboration, um, nagiging, ano siya, nagiging uh, innovative siya and uh, it will actually uh, help me. Skill kasi siya eh, na parang mas nakatulong pa siya sa akin in the, in the future na makakam up ako ng mga better ideas. So, parang non-stop, ano siya, non-stop thinking and uh, non-stop innovation. I think it's very important because um, things are changing, specifically with, with uh, when it comes to the EODB law. Bootcamp makes uh, government employees realize the value of innovation and how to make things easier for their clients. The drive for innovation in the government will prepare our nation as we leap towards the future under a sound governance and future fit leadership. Join us as we spread the culture of innovation. There is no other time but now. Right. Good morning. Hello. Everybody's back from our morning break. Ayan. Nakabalik na po silang lahat. Sir John. Yeah. Sige, yeah. Madge. Yeah. Let's uh, resume oh. our discussion. Um, yes po. Kindly resume na po. Okay. Thank you. So, this is where we stop uh, on organizational capabilities. Wait. Let me... Uh, so... Uh, for Michael Hammer, uh, continuing his idea about this process management, definitely yung at the organization level, organizational level, uh, we recognize rin yan na we have to take also into account the capabilities of your organization in terms of leadership, culture, governance, and expertise. Kasi masyadong micro yung approach ng this process management because you focus on the process, right? But uh, on the part of Michael Hammer, he recognized the, 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 the importance, the value of having these organizational capabilities to make business process management work for your organization. So what we're trying to say here is that you also have to take this into consideration, yung top management or leadership, and then the culture that is existing within your organization, the way uh, top management governs over these processes and the necessary expertise within the organization, okay? So these are also factors na dapat tingnan nyo in implementing this process management, okay? Hindi lang talaga very micro na puro processes lang titingnan nyo. So Michael Hammer, again, uh, back in 2010, came up with um, very simple principles on this process management. So let's go over them very quickly. 
all work is process work. So pwede naman i-define raw, pwede i-interpret as processes lahat ng ginagawa natin sa organization. Any process better than no process. Of course, that's very self-explanatory. A good process is better than a bad process. Again, it's very explanatory, but sinasama lang naman talagang Michael Hammer na principle yan to remind organizations na you always have to look at your processes. Baka yung process nyo, bad process na. Okay? One process version is better than many. Of course, because it's going to be so confusing for people. Even a good process must be performed effectively because, yun nga, sabi nga niya, iba yung process design sa process implementation. So there's no guarantee nga na you design the process very well, pero yung practices naman behind those processes are one thing, right? Even a good process can be made better. So there's always room for improvement. And every good process eventually becomes a bad practice. Okay, over time. Okay, kaya merong dapat periodic review of your processes. Ganun naman rin sinasabi sa ano, di ba? Sa quality management system. Kaya nga, there's that provision in clause 10 on improvement na continually you have to improve your QMS. Okay, dito muna tayo, Ange, sa first learning activity natin. We want to post a question lang, a very, very direct question lang from our uh, for our uh, audience for our participants what process issues are presently confronting your qms this is what since we're talking about the qms uh, how to improve it how to innovate uh yung processes nyo. so any more process issues that are uh diba, are confronting your organization right now any uh, more, um you can that is my concern no pandemic Mm -hmm. And po, who would like to respond? Maybe you can share your experiences with your processes. In general lang, okay? Uh, look at your your QMS, okay? Yeah. Sige Meron po. Ba? Would I like to share somebody from BFP? Meron okay. Meron yung okay. mga issues ngayon? Yeah. Hello po. Anybody from BFP? Kasi madami-dami din po tayong participants from BFP. Uh, sige, sige. From BFP? Any B process issue B po? B stands for, Ange, ano Stands for what? A fire right? protection, no? Uh -oh. Yeah, Bureau of Fire Protection. Okay. Sige po, meron po nilagay si Attorney Ramos from BAP. Work stoppage daw po is an issue which leads to slow service delivery. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct naman yun, uh, Ramos. Kasi uh, with the pandemic, no? Kasi every now and then, Bila may mabibalitaan tayo, may case about um, case on COVID. So, and then every now and then you have to disinfect your work site, di ba? Uh, extraordinary times talaga what we are in right now. And um, hopefully, naka, ito second year na natin with, in the pandemic. So, we should come up, ito, this is the best time to do innovations. Kasi uh, to look at uh, yung mga options of work from home. Uh, do doing online training like what we're doing right now, online meetings, yung ganon, to minimize to the point na pwedeng tanggalin muna yung pagpunta sa work site. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really a process issue right now. And I know that I've been hearing things, di ba, na we cannot do this, we cannot do that kasi we have to go to the office. So challenge yan, syempre din, for organizations that are not yet digitalized, di ba? Kasi you have to still go to the office physically, personally, diba, to get stuff, documents, ganyan, to, to process, diba? So, yeah, I know it's a challenge. Yeah, correct, correct. So, more? Maybe we can get more from the... Sige po. Um, anybody who would like to ano po, open their microphones? Any process issue? Process issue lang po. Any process issue that you can think of as of the moment. From BFP, Mia, Ma'am Rogelia, meron po pa tayong mga process issues? As I mean po sa experience po sa Mia is more on yung for example yung bidding process. Although uh, limited na po yung hindi mo na ma-expect na maraming mag-participate sa bidding dahil po sa ano. Although nag-adjust naman ng online participation and uh, submission din po 
So, yun po, limited, maraming na nakaka-relate kami yung nag-feel ah, yung bidding. Oh. And then also, yung uh, practice na po ngayon puro na lang uh, e-submission. So, hmm. we have to cope with the the oversight process of submission na po ng online. So, minsan, budget submission puro online. Online na <laughs> Opo, opo. opo. Oh. So, we are coping. Kung minsan naman, walang, walang magagawa. And then, kung mayroong submission din personally, hindi, na, hindi nagka-align yung ating time opening. Kami sa NIA, uh work from home and ano combine uh skeletal workforce pero yung iba pa lang office is wala sila doon talagang okay. wala oh. <laughs> opo yeah. so ganun po marami and in the field hindi na, na yung aming mga mga inspectors hindi na nakakapunta sa field yeah. so madami pong hindrances na ngayon Mabuti na lang, hindi tayo ma-penalty sa mga accomplishment. <laughs> May mobility issue tayo, ma'am, no? Kasi oh, 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 logistics oh, 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 problem. Oh, oh, lalo na kami oh. infrastructure, marami oh. sa field. Thank oh. you, ma'am, for sharing. Sige oh, okay po. Yun, yeah. Oh, okay, Ange. Oh, Ange, yun ang banggit ni ma'am. Kasi, ano yan eh, even before the pandemic, we all know that all the government agencies naman are, wake, are working, all are working for a single government. So somehow, maraming agencies na connected naman talaga yung proseso nyo. In fact, before the pandemic, when I do training on ISO 9001-2015, like yung mga related, related training, like root cause analysis, yung mga ganyan, uh, audit, ganyan, um, lumalabas eh. Di ba? Lumalabas sa agency yung issue kasi you are connected to another agency and it seems that you cannot do your work accordingly kasi may issue do sa other agency. So somehow, lumalawak lalaw, di ba? Sa parang may mga processes tayo na hindi lang contained within our agency eh. Meron tayong kailangan with another agency. Ganun yung experience ko with the National Security Council, with, uh, ano ba yun? with the Department of Justice. May mga ganun eh. So talagang it's a challenge. I know that. Kasi the processes um, are connected between and among agencies. So that's a challenge talaga. Yeah, correct si ma'am. Okay, thank you. And anyone else would like to share? How about BFP, PIDEA? Yeah. Sige. PWH? Anyone? Kindly open your microphone na lang po. No, PIDEA? Ma'am Jackie, Ma 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 would you like to share? Hi, sir. Sa Bureau of Fire, sir. Uh, sir pwede yung, sa amin po kasi dati, uh, traditional yung sa pag-conduct ng... Uh, fire safety inspection pero ngayon nga uh, ginagawa nating digitalize pero oh. mga kahit uh, gusto natin gawin yon pero kung minsan yung mga provider naman ng internet yung nagpinaghihintay oh. naman ma'am oh, ah sir tapos the same time po yung mga tao namin hindi hindi agad ganoon ka ready kasi yung mga medyo medyo na ng konti tapos bigla magshift sa digitalize yeah. so hindi sila uh, uh, ano pa doon so it takes time pa rin para bigla ang maglipat sa gano'n na system na. Okay. okay. Uh, tama yun, sir. Uh, talagang, well, we, we speak of digitalization, automation, pero ang bottom line doon, kapos na naman yung internet, di ba? So, it goes hand in hand, di ba? Na dapat ma-improve rin talaga yung, yung internet infrastructure or connectivity infrastructure dito sa Philippines. And uh, to be fair naman, talaga naman nag improve na. Okay? Uh, although very slow, hindi natin gusto na ganun ka-slow. Pero still, at least may improvement, no? Uh, hindi, pa, hindi naman tayo yung slowest na internet in the world. So, okay-okay pa tayo. Um, siguro kailangan na mapabilis natin kasi nasabi ng mga internet providers yung pag approve ng mga cell sites, cell towers, yung ganyan. Kasi para bumilis rin yung ano. So, yun ang siguro dapat i-cut down kasi minsan ang dami raw submission din. So, kung mapapabilis yun, I guess... Uh, internet connectivity is going to be more available in different parts of the country. Ayun. Tapos, uh, tama rin sinabi ni Sir, talagang marami kasi sinishift natin into virtual na trabaho eh. Virtual na task. Like yung inspection, di ba? Like, kahit sa ISO, 
di ba, yung auditing, di ba? Minsan ginagawa na virtually na. So, it's a challenge kasi we don't, we don't use, we don't, di ba, we don't do that before, eh. We're not used to doing that, eh. As we know that iba-iba yung adaptability ng mga tao, okay? So, not necessarily mga senior, di ba? To be fair naman, may mga younger people din, hindi na ma-accept na ganito na yung mode of work, ganito na yung trabaho ko na I have to do it virtually, o oh, yun. So, ganun. So, um, Yeah, i-accept natin na iba-iba yung adaptability ng mga tao, hindi agad makapag-change into that virtual mode. Yeah. So, dapat we have to give them some time to adjust, to acclimate, ano, acclimatize themselves dun sa bagong sistema na. And besides, even without the pandemic, papunta naman talaga yung mundo na sa digital, virtual. So, for as long as may improve natin yung technology, I, can, I guess, ganun na yung maging future ng work talaga. Not just for government agencies, but also the private sector, businesses, yung mga ganyan. Sige. Thank you, sir. Mm. More? More sharing pa ba? Meron pa ba, Anch? Sa YouTube, okay. sir, ang sabi naman po nila is about documentation daw po is an issue right now. Mm. Siguro oh, maybe man. because of the online system mm. necessary for the to facilitate online transactions po siguro. Yeah. Oo, yeah. oo. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, maraming, maraming, kahit, kahit naman maging electronic na siya, paperwork is always there, right? Uh, yun nga lang, pagkakaiba, it's now electronic or it's now digital, no? Um, for some people, it's a lot easier. For some people, it's more difficult for them, di ba? Uh, Karamihan sa atin, nasistrain yung eyes pag ang talaga nakatingin sa screen. So gusto na, i-download na lang muna na yung form kasi sometimes, Uh, di ba? May option naman na yung form, you can accomplish it online, di ba? Tapos bilang maglolo ko pa yung internet. So, iba din na-download na lang nila para at their own convenient time nila i-fill out yung form. So, yeah. It's still a challenge. Pero uh, with the help of technology, with the digitalization, we expect that it's going to be a lot easier, more than harder. Okay? Okay. So, yon. Sige, meron pa ba, Anch? Or we we continue na? Uh, yun pa lang, sir. If ever po, baka later na lang balikan natin kung meron pa po silang maisip. Correct, correct. Yun. So, ang, ang point lang naman of this learning activity, yun nga, uh, we want to see first yung mga process issues kasi if uh, you're innovating, you have to have a place to start. And the process issues can be a good start. Di ba? Kahit naman dun sa without innovation, di ba, in your regular na QMS certification, di ba, Uh, lalo pa pag lumabas lumaba sa audit findings na may mga process issues, di ba? Dapat i-correct nyo yan. So, pero that's also a perfect time para tingnan nyo, baka there are innovations that you can introduce in the processes kasi may mga issues na yun. Baka the innovations can help remove those issues. Okay? Yun lang yung point about singling out yung mga process issues. So, let's move on. So, eto na. What is innovation? Okay, according to ISO 56000, ito yung dictionary naman ng Innovation Management System, yung ISO 56000. Last year lang to, 2020, <laughs> nauna pa yung ano no, yung guidelines. Anyway, sabi dito, ang innovation is a, a new or changed entity realizing or redistributing value. If you're going to focus on value, it's novelty and value are relative to and determined by the perception of the organization. and relevant interested parties. So, just to put it simply, ah, para hindi nyo na masyadong isipin yung mga technical terms dyan, ang sinasabi lang naman, pag innovation, it's something different from what you're doing. That's how, that's how we can distinguish innovation from improvement. Yung term na different. Kasi yung improvement, pwedeng enhancement lang. Eh. You're still doing the same thing, pero it's just better. Pero pag innovation kasi, it's something different, something novel, something unique na hindi mo pa ginagawa before. Parang ito nga, this is perfect opportunity for us with the pandemic, di ba? Kasi this is definitely the first time in our lifetime to have this experience na pandemic. Never pa natin na experience na lalabas ka lang, kailangan mag-face shield at mag-face mask. Di ba? Kasi yung pag-alcohol naman, paliligo, <laughs> or improving or boosting your immune system, dati pa naman yan eh. Pero yung face mask, face shield, bago yan. 
that's an innovation just to survive this pandemic eh, in our case unfortunately di ba um yung kasi yung innovation kasi in 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 an ba tawag doon in ordinary times okay luxury dapat yan eh na you take your time um uh kela mag immerse ka to get the insights to use your intuition yung mga ganun di ba to come up with innovations but given the pandemic and the need to survive the pandemic ah, not to get sick not to die this is a pandemic di ba um we need to innovate para may sense of urgency na baka innovation can help us right kasi lalo pa nga tingnan niyo yung work system natin now we have to do work from home now we have to schedule skeletal workforce we have to take turns in going to the office we have to minimize the crowd diba mga ganun these are these are unheard of before okay so let's try to look into the future dito nga sa DAP we're promoting uh, futures thinking okay so gamitin natin yon let's look at what's going to happen in the future okay and try to embrace that kasi you know future natin wala naman there's no way forward but the future diba you cannot go forward to the past diba pabalik yun eh diba kaya ako, it should be backward diba so the only way forward is towards the future so let's see what's going to happen to the future okay it can be a product yung innovation can be a service can be a process model method or whatever whatever is different that you're doing can be considered an innovation it's an outcome sometimes refers to activities or processes resulting in or aiming for innovation like innovation activities diba especially when you do your own yes meron pong nagtanong ano daw po uh, if it's uh, uh, does improvement is is improvement tantamount to innovation kasi gambawa nag-improve siya sa product sa service does that mean it's also innovation um component ng innovation yung improvement kasi definitely para maging worthwhile yung innovation na introduce mo it should be my experience dapat natin improvement on that something like the product the service the process o o pero if uh, strictly we're going to look at innovation as something different kung yung improvement na introduce mo it's not different from the previous from the current from the status quo then it's not an innovation it's just an improvement Okay, and there's nothing wrong with that, ha? There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, kung ang kailangan ng situation, improvement lang, at yun ang talagang kayang gawin, feasible gawin, because of the resources, because of the circumstances, then fine. Okay? Pero ang innovation kasi, it's something different. Di ba? Like, okay, eto nga. Eto ng pandemic na lang, eh. Um, before, pag nasa bahay ka, hindi ka nagtatrabaho. Hindi counted yun. Right? To the point nga iba, sabi lang, they, they, they bring their work at home, sa bahay. Um, so, inuuwi nila. Okay? But that's not counted, di ba? It's an extra work na masyadong mahal mo yung agency mo, ginagawa mo yung extra work. Oh, pero ngayon, ina-accept na. Basta may arrangement ng work from home, pwede. And you get your salary. <laughs> di ba? Oh. Pero yun yung innovation sa work. Kasi hindi mo pwede pagpilito na lahat tayo pumasok pa rin. Kahit may pandemic, kahit magkahawahan na tayo. Sige, pasok pa rin tayo. In fact, that's ano eh, contrary to the logic na nga eh. Contrary to the wisdom of the pandemic eh. That's a stupid uh, pronouncement to tell your to tell your staff, to tell your organization na lahat tayo pumasok ha, as if parang walang pandemic. Okay, let's not wear mask kasi vaccinated naman no di ba that's not the that's not the correct wisdom you still have to take care of yourself kasi vaccination is not really a, a prevention it's not really it's just para hindi lang lumala you still have to take the precautions still keep yourself clean hygienic take a bath keep away from people as much as possible iniwasan lang na lumala at mamatay yung tao yun ang purpose ng vaccination pero it doesn't protect you from the virus, you can still get the virus. Yung mga ganun ba? So, ito yung mga innovation. Kaya nga sinasabi, ang sinasabi ko, like, 
kahit, kahit wala na sigurong virus or paano tayo masyadong apekto ng virus, dapat nga yung mga facilities natin, sensorized, nakasensor na, hindi nahahawakan, di ba parang sa mall, di ba yung, yung glass, bumubukas na lang pagpapasok tayo, yung glass door, ganun dapat, hindi mo na hawakan. Kasi di ba doon nakukuha rin yung virus pag hinawakan? Hmm. No touch na talaga. Walang hiraman ng cellphone, walang makikitawag. <laughs> Dapat sarili mo yung gadget, walang hiraman ng laptop or computer, ng mouse, ng pencil, ng ball pen, o to keep it to keep safe. Tapos at a distance, okay? Except kung spouses kayo, di ba? Kung girlfriend, boyfriend, yung mga ganun. So, so, hindi lahat ng improvement, innovation. Kasi pag strictly innovation, dapat different, di ba? From the usual, from what you're doing sa status quo. Pero lahat ng innovation, improvement, syempre. In fact, yun ang value ng innovation. Nag-innovate ka kasi you want to improve. Pag yung innovation mo, hindi nag-improve, hindi, hindi, wala yun, walang kwenta yun. Okay? So, there's one clarification here. Yeah. Um, is innovation same with invention? Oh, okay. That's a very good question. Um, kasi in the, in, the, in the literature, sa mga scientific field, uh, if, if you produce something tangible, that's invention. So, ang, mis, ang ginagawa ng definition is that when you apply innovation on something, it becomes invention kasi it's something tangible that you can hold on to. Like a product talaga. Okay? Ganro yung invention. Uh, so, in that sense, para yung invention tsaka innovation. Pero kasi, yung innovation, mas malawak yung application kasi kahit processes, innovation yun pag na, binago mo yung processes mo. Eh. Pero that's not something tangible. Di ba? Unless you observe it, pero still, it's the way people do their work, yung process. So that's innovation, but that, that's not invention. Right? In the, in the sense na ginagamit ng mga scientists when they look at invention, na talaga something tangible. Okay? Kaya we prefer to use innovation, yung term, than invention. Okay? So parang gan ganun, yung, ganun yung nakikita ko sa literatures with regard to the use in term na innovation and invention. Pero at the end of the day, guys, it's all about what you do and how you help the organization. Regardless if it's called innovation, invention, improvement, for as long as nag improve yung organization, you're working smarter, you're more intelligently, you're working better, you're more responsive to the clients, the public, uh, you're more efficient. Effect That's good, regardless of the label, right? Oh, nga lang, we have to use certain terms like innovation kasi otherwise, hindi tayo magkakaintindihan, right? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, huwag kayo masyadong concern about the term. Okay? Mm -hmm. Pero technically, when you look at innovation, it's something na improvement siya, but it's something different from the what you're doing. Okay? For example, um, sa, sa higher education, sa mga colleges, universities. Okay? Um, diba? You have to go to class. Ganyan, eh, ang hirap na. Kasi nga, because of the pandemic. So, everything has to be done online, virtual. So, inisip nga namin sa, sa mga higher education, um, mababago na yung academic calendar. Siguro this time, magkakaroon ng what we call flexible learning or hybrid learning or uh, blended learning na uh, wala na yung virus pero half the time on-site sa classroom, half of the time online. Okay? So, yun yung mga innovations sa pwede improve. Kasi before, that's unheard of. Hindi ina-accept yung mga online classes. Now, we resort to online classes kasi that's the only thing that we have right now. Kami sa GSPDM, sa graduate school. Puro online na kami. We don't go to Ortigas anymore or even to DAP Tagaytay. Kasi that's a no-no. Diba? When you can do it online like this one, why risk yourself getting infected by the virus because it has, it has to be on-site? Oh, uh, meron pa ba, Ange? Para may umiilaw-ilaw sa ano? Wala na, sir. Oh, okay. We're good okay. na ba pa? Sige. Okay, let's move on. Pero I like the questions, ah. Uh, that those are very good questions. So why innovate the QMS? Because QMS is a dynamic system. It's not static. 
di ba, over time nagkakaroon ng mga changes. It should change over time to sustain its relevance and effectiveness. Sinasabi rin naman talaga sa ISO yun, sa ISO 9001-2015, doon sa cross 10, sa improvement. Continually, you have to improve your QMS. The QMS should follow suit, uh, uh, sorry, follow suit organizational changes. Pwede rin mangyari kasi yun, di ba? Na may mga in-introduce the changes sa organization nyo, like reorganization. So dapat sumunod din yung QMS nyo to stay relevant doon sa whatever your configuration is for your organization. And continual improvement is a requirement of ISO 9001-2015. Okay? Kaya nga sabi nga natin, um, yung ISO 56002-2019, yung dinidiscuss natin ngayon, um, it's a tool, it's a, it's a way to improve your QMS. So ito lang yung I, what I call the innovation paradox. The innovation process should be formalized or what we call institutionalized to maximize its value and benefits to the organization. But ito yung uh, cliche niya, uh, no, no, kicker niya. But too much structure can stifle and stymie the process. Kasi nga, di ba, pag sinabing innovation, you give the person or persons some time to think and you cannot rush thinking there's no such thing as rush thinking okay or quick thinking yun yung mga witty witty comments di ba quick thinking ang kailangan di ba pero when we talk about innovation talagang talagang you have to immerse yourself like it's like sipping wine ganyan or taking your time kasi depende kung kailan magkakaroon ng eureka kung tinatawag na eureka or insight yung magdodon upon you kung ano yung mga ideas, ganyan. So, innovation takes time. Hindi siya minamadali. Kasi, hindi mo siya parang program na, okay, let's innovate. Okay, bukas, may innovation na ako. Hindi ganun yun eh. You cannot guarantee that. Okay? Innovation just, minsan, innovation just happens. Okay? But, pag ganun ka, undisciplined naman, parang strike anywhere, basta bilang mangyayari na lang, di ba? hindi niya natin mamamaximize yung value na yon, Baka nga to the point na may certain innovations na ma-miss out pa natin yung opportunity na yon. So we have to come up with a system to make it a disciplined process, a formalized process para ma-monitor natin. Pero giving due recognition na we don't rush innovation. Yung example ko nga kanina dun sa, ay kahapon, dun sa webinar ko on knowledge management uh, sa Japan, um, there are certain companies there na uh, do sa 8-hour work schedule nila, um, may one hour doon na nilivote sila for thinking lang. Not doing anything but thinking. Kasi, yun nga, sabi nga, parang working ba is not part of thinking, di ba? Dapat part ng thinking, uh, dapat part ng working and thinking. Pero kasi, when you, when you sit down and stare at the wall or the, the nice view sa Ano yun, parang you're not working when 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 you're thinking naman talaga. Di ba? Kasi pag if you're not doing anything, just staring, just sitting down, parang you're not you're not working. Pero what if you're thinking naman? Oh, kaya nga to 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 deliberately encourage uh yung mga tao sa Japan to think. They're given one art to think lang. Just don't do anything, just think. Go to a place where you where you can think, whatever that place is. You can go outside, you can go anywhere. Okay? So, ganun. So, one tool that you can use is environmental scanning. Eh? It's a very practical tool. Hindi lang sa innovation management, but the other ISO, the other systems that you have. Okay? Environmental scanning. Kasi it, uh, it connects you to the environment, both the external and internal of the organization the external environment and the internal environment. What's happening? What's happening out there? Particularly pag external environment, yung interested parties nyo or stakeholders. And in your case, talaga automatic yun eh kasi nire-require kayo ng ISO 9001-2015, yung QMS nyo, na you look at the needs and expectations for stakeholders. So naturally, you're doing this na. Ang pagkakaiba lang ngayon, mag-isip rin kayo ng mga innovations na pwedeng ma-apply doon. Baka makakuha, makakuha pa kayo ng idea mismo sa interested parties nyo, sa stakeholders nyo. Di ba? 
Kasi hindi naman kailangan galing palagi sa inyo innovations. Eh. You talk to your public, you talk to your stakeholders. Kaya nga, uh, on August 18, kay pag-attend nyo nun, i-discuss nyo, i-discuss, i-discuss yung co-creation model in one whole mark. Okay? One whole, uh, one of the hallmarks, sorry. One of the hallmarks of co-creation is uh, engaging with your stakeholders, knowing your stakeholders. Na ginagawa nyo na. Kaya hindi na ito bago. Hindi na mahirap gawin ito kasi ginagawa nyo na because of your certified QMS. Okay. Ano yung mga sources of process improvements or innovation pa yung natin tignan? Of course, yung new products, services, programs, and processes. Okay. Uh, changing stakeholder needs and requirements as mentioned do, doing the environmental scanning, organizational or agency strategic thrust, goals and objectives, di ba? Uh, nagagawa kayo mga strat plan, nagpa-planning, okay? Nakakuha rin ng mga ideas doon for innovation. Uh, regulatory and statutory requirements and policies kasi every now and then, di ba, may mga bagong Republic Acts tas with their accompanying uh, IRRs or implementing rules and regulations. Diba? Ang dami niyan. Sinasabi ko na nga sa inyo, ang daming innovations, ang daming pwede makita doon sa RA 11032 or the EODD EPSD. Diba? I really like that Republic Act. So, sobra akong bias doon. I really like that. Talagang kitang-kita, lalo pa sa topic natin ngayon. So, try to revisit, review the EODB, the, the, the Republic Act. Baka you can also get ideas there to uh, about innovation uh, how to innovate your processes and then your process requirements diba yun yung sa organization niya na or as prescribed in or as um as stipulated in uh, ISO 9001-2015. and it's a job performance diba baka pwede makakuha rin kayo doon okay eto another learning activity what were the innovations implemented in your organization for the last five years? Can you share? Think about it. For the last five years, sa organization, sa agency nyo, ano sa tingin nyo yung mga innovations na na-implement nyo, na, na ginawa nyo? Not necessarily kayo nag-initiate. Not necessarily kayo nakaisip. Okay? Meron ba? Kahit anong innovation, not necessarily related sa processes. Meron po dito sa chat box, sa okay. GPTV. Ma'am Regina, would you like to open your microphone po? Uh, hello. Good Hi, morning. Um, for our office, we had different kinds of portals to support our core functions. Because for TSO, we monitor procurement reports hmm. um, and ensure transparency for procurement activities. So we developed the online portal where PEs post um, their bid opportunities transacted through Bayanihan, specifically lang. Um, we developed the blacklisting online portal to oh. move away from the ministerial na uh, per person ang nag-evaluate. So, PEs na magpo-post through the portal. Yun. And then, we also now launched just this year the PBD Builder. So, What's no that? more physical accomplishment of bidding docs. So, just encode. Okay. So, for our office. Oh, tapos, work is more, uh, work is faster pa, no? Mm. Yes, very much. Lala na with the new normal. Mas nakapag-focus na kami on other aspects from yeah. different teams moving forward. Oh, okay yun, ma'am. Okay yun, Regina. Kasi, di ba, yung, it goes to show yung pandemic, yun naman doom and gloom. <laughs> may positive, may, di ba, may quote-unquote positive side naman siya. Di ba? Yun nga. Eh, yes, sabi. parang ano, parang yun yung final straw, if that's the right term, na that really pushed us to really exactly. move forward, to take the big jump. Parang yun yung nag-fasten. Exactly. The need for innovation. Oh, yeah, if we're going to be thankful to the pandemic, <laughs> eto na-push talaga tayo kasi. We have to adapt. Di ba? Like yung, when we conduct training for MSMEs, yung mga entrepreneurs, yun know, sabi namin eh. You really have to adapt. You cannot fight the pandemic. You cannot go against it. There's nothing you can do about it. But to adapt, di ba? Sige, Ange, meron pa ba? Sure, uh, we have here. Ma'am Sarah, would you like to open your microphone po? 
Meron po siya dito sa chat box. Ma'am Sarah from BSP. Attorney yeah. Sarah. Yes, yes. ma'am. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So, um, although earlier um, innovation na yun ng BSP to promote digital payments, mm. um, we saw an increase in digital payment transactions in the past year, actually. Okay. So, um, we're trying to improve our infrastructure, even yung transactions namin within BSP, we're trying to digitalize as well. So, so yun. Uh, Just to keep up with the times. Okay, okay. Oh, yun. I mean, simple uh, digitalization. Kasi, sabi nga, that's the future na eh. Diba? So, if, if, sa organization natin, if we want our organization to continue its relevance, to continue to become, to be, to be relevant, and para mag-adapt rin tayo sa situation, even without the pandemic, talagang digitalization eh. Digital na talaga yung platform. So, may iwan talaga sa agency, sa agency natin, may iwan talaga yung organization natin, if we don't, di ba, ride that wave yung digitalization. Sige, thank you ma'am. More? Ange? Sir John, um, yeah. meron ng concern si Attorney Remo sa kanyang microphone, but he wrote on the chat box, yeah. um, innovation on online procurement, mm. online partnerships, and use of digital signature po. Oh, yes, yun. Oh, oh. Dito. Correct, correct. Oh. Sir, um, maybe we can hear from Ms. Diana from the ILG. Yes, po. good morning, Ma'am Angela. Yes, good morning. Sir, Hi, Diana. Yung sa, for the ILG, though, kahit wala pa si pandemic, uh, this has already been developed. Pero actually, um, nung nagka-pandemic na, uh, itong document management system, uh, mm. the more na na-enhance siya. Yeah. The, the, the purpose of this DMS is, kumbaga, lahat virtually, uh, dito na dadaan, at least recorded siya when the office kailan nila na-receive and kailan ginawa ng action, lahat meron na siyang recorded na yung, yung processes or activities na or actions na ginawa dun sa document na yun. Oh, okay. And then merong, merong uh, na-develop ang aming ISTMS na parang uh, internet, not really for pandemic, pero yun yung ginamit na, na platform for us kasi halos lahat sa amin, especially sa central office, ay naka-work from home. May mga skeletal lang na pumapasok. Doon na rin nag-online na, yeah. na time in, time out ang mga person ang mga personnel. Agree, 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 uh, Diana, no? Kasi yung DMS kasi, uh, andan yung mag-monitor na, andan yung mag-track, Kasi automatic na record na siya. Yes po, sir. Yeah. Okay yun, okay yun. Uh, and we also use this uh, doon sa mga ISO processes namin, sir. Hmm. Kung baga, if, eh, kung baga, doon na namin natatrack kung namimit namin yung target na sa objectives namin. Kung oh. if within the target time na kailangan namin siyang action. Correct. Correct. Doon kami masyadong ano, careful. Mas madali na yung document control. Oo oh, po. Yes, sir. Correct, correct. Oo, oh, okay yun. Hmm. Uh, talaga naman eh, uh, technology is a tool. So if it's available and we can afford it, it's visible for our organization, gamitin natin kasi sayang naman yung benefits na ma-derive natin from using the technology. Though actually may mga benefits, uh, syempre weighing between the benefits and the uh, yung disadvantages. Um, yeah. Especially la hindi naman lahat ng ano ng sorry sir ha, hindi ako maka-video kasi intermittent okay ang akin ano <laughs> ang aking connection. Okay yung lang. yung disadvantages kasi sir, yeah. hindi lahat ng mga empleyado ay they have budget for mm -hmm. the Wi-Fi or the data, mm -hmm. yung mga ganun. Pero kung nasa office kasi kami, syempre libre and mabilis. Madali. So, though may mga konting delays especially if naka-data ka lang kasi mabigat yung mga document. Oh, saka sa inyo kasi you have to deal with different LGUs. Iba-iba yung concerns nila sa location nila about internet. Yes, sir. Opo. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sir John, Ma'am Diana, yan. Sige po. Uh, similarly, yan. Meron din pong comment dito si uh, sa, from NPC. Would you like to open your microphone po? Sa NPC? Hi, sir. Hello. Or would you like me to read your comment na lang po here in the chat box? 
for the National Telecommunications Commission po ba ito? I think may concern po siya sa microphone. So, um, for them daw po in the NTC, currently they have uh, setting up, they are, they are setting up a system for online transactions to address the filing of applications. May concerns kasi yung clientele when it comes to filing their applications. Mm. A quick run through lang, sir. We have a, a few a uh, lineup of answers to your question on the innovations implemented in the government ngayon po in government organizations currently so from um miss elena edora sabi po ay online issuance of permits yeah. ay naka innovate daw po sila yeah. and they have online pds yan yung personal data sheet. data sheet yeah oh, thank correct. you and then from Sir Jed then, online document tracking, similar po sa sinabi kanina. Sa um, yes, from Rodelia Aquino, we have QMS engagement. Um, in the same manner, from Ms. Marichu, they have document tracking din po. And mm -hmm. Temis Lurlen, Crisostomo, they have an online feedback system. Yes. Oh, that's good. So, okay yun. Yeah. Sige po. Um, I think the BFP would like to share their ano din po, their innovations as well. Parang may comment po dito si Sir. Si yes, Sir President. Yes, Sir. Would you like to open your microphone? Yes, Sir. Sir? Baka po uh, nakamute ka, Sir. Would you uh, let us unmute you po? And start your video. There you uh, go. Hello, good morning. Po. Hi, sir. Good morning. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. In the past five years, as far as I know, uh, dyan kami nagkaroon ng ISO certification. It mm. was 2018 to be exact. Mm -hmm. So previously, di namin alam yung ISO talaga. Yeah. So yeah. that's one good development sa agency namin. And then, nung last year po, na nagkaroon ng pandemic, uh, our agency also adopted online processes. Mm -hmm. Just like yung mga report namin, usually email, email na lang. Uh, and also, na-mention na kanina ng aming uh, RCDS, yung par safety inspection mm -hmm. is uh, being done online yung reports po. But uh, inspection is done physically kasi hindi po oh. pwede yung virtual. Kasi yun, mahirap yun. <laughs> Just yung reporting lang po. Uh -oh. uh, it's paperless now. And, and also yung uh, aming uh, fire safety inspection certificate dito sa NCR is also uh, paperless na din. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully online payment will be soon uh, developed. Mm -hmm. Particularly sa mga fire code fees para yung ating client will not go anymore sa bank, will not go anymore sa aming fire ah, state oh, oh. to pay. Uh, at, the, at, at their own convenience na, sir, uh, pwede na nilang mabayaran yung fees nila. Thank you. Oh, di ba, tsaka, sir, uh, lahat ng banks ngayon, online na eh. So, hindi na kailangan ng physical na, na facility, di ba? Kasi pwede ka na mag-transfer ng funds, pwede ka na yes. mag-deposit. Mag yeah. 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 Sir, sir okay. John, siksik liglig at umaapaw ang ating sharing session when it comes to innovation. Oh, right. so, in the interest of time, because it's already 11.15, maybe we can um, move on to oh, other sir. discussions yeah. because I think mas na-excite sila to know other Ano po, uh, relate, uh, other related concepts, lalo ngayon, because we've discussed a lot of uh, uh, innovation projects that they've the, that they're starting, they did before. Thank correct, correct. So, yeah, thank, thank you, you. Ange. Uh, just to summarize lang to learning activity na to, uh, mostly naman, talagang digitalization ay pinag-uusapan natin, use of technology, which is the natural response, eh, diba? because of the pandemic. So, yeah, these are very good innovations. Thank you for that. So, let's move on. Um, so yun nga, sabi nga natin, when we talk about innovation management, we talk about um, this, continual improvement. And uh, kasi palaging, ano, kasi napaka-vague talaga nung, nung sa, not really vague, pero siguro limited lang uh, yung explanation ng continual improvement sa clause 10, di ba? Sa um, ISO 9001-2015. So it's a good thing uh, now we have this... Uh, 56,000 series, di ba? Yung innovation management. So we can also get ideas on how to continually 
improve our QMS by introducing innovations. Pero parang kung sila sabi sa kanila, we can also take a look at yung PDCA cycle, no? Pero just to be clear, yung continual improvement is about intermittent, periodic, progressive change. Kasi before, di ba, ang ginagamit na ISO is continuous improvement. Now they shifted to continual improvement kasi hindi naman kailangan uh, never ending o parang ne, uh, 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 parang no stopping. Kasi sabi nga nila, you have to also um, consider yung stability naman ng processes. Stability ng system. If you keep on changing, people will have a hard time following the system, following the process. So, it has to be continual improvement, na intermittent, periodic, progressive change. So, yung pagkailangan lang talaga, it change. Okay? So, merong, merong dapat need, may justification for introducing the improvement. At sabi nga natin kanina, uh, the best advice na para appro or the best approach to continual improvement is using W. Edwards Deming's uh, PDCA cycle or what we call the Deming cycle, di ba? Plan, do, check, act. Okay? Tapos, uh, before, um, nung before the pandemic, uh, when I conducted the training for, for quality management, okay, for the SM group of companies, okay, talagang nakita, na, nakita yung value ng PDCA do sa training na yun kasi talagang we went through the process of planning, doing, checking, acting. Talagang we, we saw the improvement do sa process when we do it deliberately, talaga PDCA, okay? So even the exercises will show that the PDC, PDCA cycle really works, okay? Pag talaga sinuloso natin gamitin, okay? So we talk about innovation capability, okay? Uh, if organizations want to really innovate, they should possess that capability, innovation capability. What is it? It is the potency of an organization or potential to create and apply a new idea that produces a new and useful product, service, process, practice, or, or technology, or whatnot that benefits the organization and or its stakeholders. Okay? So it's not random, man. We just need to introduce improvements or innovations. You're, you have innovation capability if you're able to produce these ideas, these new things, pero in response to the needs of your stakeholders. You always go back to that. Sabi nga natin, bali wala innovation mo, bali wala improvement mo, kung di na makakatulong sa servicing your stakeholders, attending to the needs of your stakeholders or your interested parties. Kung di makakatulong sa organization. Maybe yeah. you'd like to elaborate the discussion because we have one question here yeah. from Sir Alan de Guzman ng YouTube po, from YouTube. Mm. Um, na, Nia, from Nia. Um, sabi po niya, maybe you can expound how the innovation management system um, relates to invention, improvement, creativity, research, and development. Daming buzzwords. <laughs> okay. Does it relate to invention, improvement? Parang nasagot na improvement kanina. Oh. Nasagot na yung invention. Maybe on creativity, research, and development based on the ISO standard of 56,000. Okay. O oh, sige, ganito yan. Um, that's a very good question. Pero it requires a long answer. Eh. Pero anyway, just to simplify it, okay. Uh, yung creativity kasi always associated with innovation, right? Yung term na creativity. Uh, so, we recognize the fact that uh, it starts with creativity. Uh, more or less yung creativity, it's a, it's a, a trait, di ba? A trait of the person. Di ba? A creative person. May creativity siya. Okay? So, you need that trait in a way to be able to innovate down. But it's not always a requirement kasi uh, ang nangyayari kasi, innovation, nangyayari talaga yan. Nagkaka-eureka nga, yung inside, biglang, it dawns upon you na, it just happens. Lalo pa if you're very keen on observing what's happening around you or talaga you contemplate, you sit down, you meditate, you observe, you analyze, may lalabas na idea eh. Kahit hindi ka napaka-creative na tao. Pero it's, it's, it's much easier for people who are creative. So that's how I see the connection between creativity and innovation. 
In fact, there's a there's a there's a request on my part on sa, ano, sa Manila International Airport Authority (MIAA) to do a training on creativity and innovation. Kino connect nila yon, okay? Pero talaga naman connected, okay? Pero of course, in our case, we're more interested with innovation. Now, yung R and D naman, research and development. Of obviously, it's the most formal form. <laughs> There's such a term, diba? most formal form of innovation. Kasi diba, yun ang trabaho talaga ng R&D department, R&D unit, research and development department, to innovate. Okay? Um, yun yung, pag if you're really serious about innovation, gan and you, you want to really formalize it, you create an R&D department. Pero ang, ang misgiving ko lang kasi doon, it's not the monopoly of the R&D department or unit to do the innovation. Ang tendency kasi, masyadong nalilimit lang sa kanila. Sila inaasan. Dun, dun, that's where you look That's where you look at if you need innovations. Pero not necessarily. Minsan pa nga, baka mas makatulong pa. Wala kayong R&D department. Everyone is into innovation. Kasi innovation can come from anyone. Paano kung nakaisip ka, eh, you're not part of the R&D? Paano kung janitor ka? Eh, nakaisip ko ng innovation. Hindi mo pwede share yun at ma-recognize ka for, for having that innovation. So yun lang ang yun lang misgiving ko kasi there's a tendency for people na oh sige sa R&D at trabaho ng R&D ang problema nila yan. Sayo naman kung merong idea or may innovation na naisip yung isang tao. Okay? Pero definitely okay yung research and development kasi that's what they do every day. Innovate, uh, think about innovative ideas, innovative ways on how to improve the organization yung R&D. Okay? Although sa private sector, sa businesses, nakakonect lang yung R&D with products, with services. Kasi yun ang thrust nila, eh, di ba? But of course, yung R&D should also engage with process improvement, process innovation, di ba? Yung other parts of the organization, hindi lang, hindi lang limited or focused on products and services. Okay? So, ganun. So, definitely... Uh, in fact, this is a 56,000 series, okay, na sinasabi sa ISO. Merong, ano, may mention about research and development, eh, especially when you talk about intellectual property management. Meron kasi, there's, a, there's already a, a specific ISO devoted to intellectual property management. Okay? So, ganun. Tapos meron pa specific ISO Pero I think it's in the works pa lang, uh, under development, yung on idea development. Idea, may ISO on idea management. Idea development, ganun. Idea lang yun, ha? Mm. Ganun ka-specific na yung ISO. So wait for that, I think, kasi nagsisimula pa lang uh, mag-focus mag ang ISO into innovation. Pero ang dami lalabas na ISO on innovation. Okay? So I hope I clarified the question, Ange. Okay ba? Yes, sir. Thank you. Ah, sige. Let's move on. Uh, so, ito yung mga innovation tools. Very fast na lang kasi we may be running out of time. Uh, sige. Uh, these are the more popular tools. Okay? We have the Innovation Management Capability Assessment. Uh, merong separate na ISO on this Innovation Management Capability Assessment. The 2019 version. So, nulubas yung, yung ISO 56002. I don't know, 56,003 ata to eh. Pero meron. Meron ng Innovation Management Capability Assessment. So, you can use that standard to assess the innovation management capability of your organization. Okay? So, yun. So, that's a tool. You just use the standard. But of course, we don't have the time and space here to discuss that, that particular standard. But that's a very good standard. And then, of course, uh, some of you may be familiar with design thinking na. Right? And it's the... The, the thrust of the innovation lab of um, of the AP, which are going to have uh, application on August 18. They'll be talking about design thinking. Okay, that's how they do their work. They, they they're following the the ideas, the processes of design thinking. Okay, and then we have the innovation matrix and innovation cube. Bisa na lang natin, ha? Um, Ito yung mga notes lang. It's the it's a innovation management capability assessment. Uh, it's determining the maturity levels of innovation 
management capabilities of organization. So, nandun yung mga guidelines. Okay, nandun yun. Pero you don't get certified to that. They just provide the guidelines, yung ISO standard na yun, on determining the, capab the innovation capability capabilities of organizations. Okay? It is based on, ninote ko na lang, for your guidance, it is based on ISO 56002, 2019, including ISO 9004, di ba? Ito usually ginagamit ng mga consultants, ng mga auditors, di ba? Na for the continual improvement of the organization, ISO 9004, 2018, and we have the ISO, yon. that's where it is contained, ISO TR 56004, 2019. Nandun yung Innovation Management Capabilities Assessment. Oh, 2019 rin siya. Uh, yun, you just have to uh, I forgot lang if it's already adopted by the the Bureau of Philippine Standards ng DTI natin eh. otherwise if it's not yet PNS or adopted or Philippine, Nas ano, Philippine National Standards pag hindi pa siya adopted kasi ng, ng, ng BPS natin you have to purchase it directly from the ISO website and it's more expensive. <laughs> Mas mura kasi pag inadopt na ng, ng, ano, ng BPS. Okay? So, pero I, I'm not sure yet. Okay? So, you have to check. In design thinking, it follows the logic of defining whatever you're trying to innovate. Does em empathize meaning uh, connecting your idea with your user with the stakeholder with the client or whoever with the customer and then ideate think about how you connect yung leads nila with what they what they want diba? so ideate parang brainstorming yan and then you concretize it by creating prototypes or prototyping and then eventually implementing it this will be further discussed in august on august 18 okay so eto nga yung Ito yung pinaka-thrust nga ng Innovation Lab ng DAP. And then ito, kinaklassify lang sa Innovation Matrix yung types ng innovation. So it could be breakthrough innovation, basic research, which is the academic type of research. And then the sustaining innovation, meaning just uh, improving the status quo, ganyan. And then yung talagang disruptive innovation, which talagang change, ang laki ng change, malayo yung change from the status quo. Okay? So, ginagamit na in, yung innovation matrix to classify the innovations that you are introducing in your organization. Okay? It's a way to organize lang your thoughts about innovations sa organizations nyo. And then we have the innovation cube. Sa innovation cube naman, ginagamit, uh, tinitignan lang iba't ibang factors that you have to consider in doing innovations. There's what they call, uh, first yung triggers of innovation, sa ba nag-i-start yun, di ba, nagkakost ng innovation, tapos yung enablers, the the factors that should be in place to enable, to to facilitate innovation, and then the drivers of innovation. Ito yung example nga, uh, the triggers of innovation can be sa right side, we, we, have, we have the market, okay, and then for, 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 as an example, for enablers, you have the technology, Diba? Kasi usually to look at the feasibility of innovation, you have to look at the technology. If the technology is existing, if the technology can support the innovation. And then for the drivers of innovation, because of the product need, you need to innovate your product. Okay? So yun lang example nung sa unit innovation cube. I specify yun lang yung details about the market or the client or the stakeholder. And then the technologies that are existing or not yet existing. And then your product, yung, yung, what you're trying to innovate. It could be the product, it could be the service, it could be the process. Okay? So it's the innovation cube. Ito lang yung mga uh, popular. But of course, meron pang iba. Like, I don't know if you have heard of uh, yung TRIZ. So, uh, sorry, sorry. Yung sa, sa created by this German, ano, yung TRIZ. That's the theory of inventive problem solving. It's more complicated. Pa. So we don't have the agendas, time and space for that. So anyway, let's move on to uh, ISO 56002, 2019. So ito yun. It's how it looks like. Again, uh, just a note. Uh, 
you don't get certified to this ha? kasi this is just guidelines it's not certifiable you have to wait for 56001 it's under development if you want to get certified with your innovation management system pero ito yon and if you will see ayan yeah, no, oh with a context ganyan diba leadership you're familiar with that diba planning so diba it's the high level structure much like with your ISO 9001 2015 diba ganun pa rin ganun yung structure niya oh kaya nga ang 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 prediction ko kanina the mention ko na if they if they ever come up with a 56001 baka ganito rin yung laman okay I think ang nangyari is that before they thought na there's no need to to certify the innovation management system of organization so they came up with the 56,002 lang but now they have to convert it to 56,001 kasi now sabi nila parang pwede na ma-certify kaya nahuli yung 56,001 kasi as you all know uh, yung mga naka-number na 1 56,001 30,401, 14,001, 45,001, 9,001. na standards. If it's numbered differently like ito, ISO 56,002, hindi siya certifiable. Kaya nga yung, let's say, ISO 31,000, di ba risk management yun? You don't get certified to risk management. Right? There's no such thing. So, kaya it's numbered 31,000. Di ba? I hope I'm making sense, no? So, sa, sa ISO kasi, para malaman nyo kung pwede kayo magpa-certify yung numbering nung, ano, nung ISO. Dapat 1. 26,001, ganun-ganun. Okay? Okay, I hope I made sense. <laughs> so, eto yung pinaka-scheme niya, yung laman ng standard in different parts, in diagram, showing the connection among the different elements, different sections, different clauses of the document of the of, of ISO 26002. Yan. Okay, okay. Ito yung roadmap nyo. Yan. Malapit na tayo sa katapusan. Ito yung roadmap nyo in innovating your QMS. Okay? So, you, as I said, you start with your process innovations. Kasi ang ini-innovate nyo talaga is yung processes ng quality management system nyo. Kaya tingnan nyo muna yon. Kaya nga, isa, yung unang -una nating learning activity, it's all about ano yung process issues. Kasi baka yun nga, there, that's the perfect time to introduce innovations in your processes. Or pwede naman yung innovations nyo sa practices. The way people perform the practices. Pero kadalasan kasi, mahirap gawin yan. Kasi the practices should be aligned to the processes. So, if you make innovations of practices, tapos nag-deviate siya from the processes, you're going to have a problem, di ba? Hmm. So, whatever these are, process innovations or innovation practices, ipapasok nyo siya doon sa existing na QMS nyo. Well and good if your QMS is certified. As we explained earlier, um, it's a lot easier because you're already dealing with processes that are already good, that are already well in place, that are already audited, that are already certified. Alam niyo maayos na yung processes niyo, so mas madali na yung innovations. And of course, with the integration of the of your QMS, you're going to be introducing. Look at that, oh, QMS changes. Magkakaroon ng mga pagbabago when you talk about innovations to your QMS. So you have to accept the fact that these changes okay, have to be taken into account. And you have to, you have to accept that you have to, you have to change things when you introduce innovations in your QMS. So because these changes introduce new things, they have to be documented because wala pa eh. Hindi pa nag exist before. So wala pa kayong documentation on. So you have to document these changes. And then, naturally, after documenting it, you have to implement it, di ba? Straightforward na to na alam nyo ng logic ng QMS. After implementing it, you have to audit it, try to see to what extent the processes and practices are aligned to the standard, and then introduce corrective actions after the audit. 
and then subject that corrective actions to management review because corrective actions cannot be implemented, cannot be applied without management review, without approval of top management, right? Mm. Tapos, implement you now with the innovations now. So that means uh, we are predicting that with the introduction of innovations, mara reconfigure talaga yung QMS nyo. Pero, hindi pa rin, hindi na mawawala yung certification nun, or pagiging certified niya, kung i-follow niyo yung process ng internal audit, then introducing corrective actions, tapos magkakaroon ng management approval or management review. Then over time, continually improve niyo na lang. Okay? So that's the roadmap for applying QMS. So, not much of a difference. It's not that complicated. It's just that introducing innovations in your processes. And given the innovations to your processes, magkakaroon ng changes. I-document nyo lang changes na, i-audit nyo, i-management review nyo, then introduce corrective actions para maayos pa rin yung QMS nyo, and that's it. And i-register nyo lang for, for audit, external audit ng mga certifying registers. Yun, that's how you, unless yung pinag-usapan natin kanina na you want to come up with a separate innovation management system in your organization. You can also do that and get that innovation management system of yours or IMS certified, well, the upcoming standard na 56,001. Kasi ito, nag-induce lang kayo ng innovations and you're using 56,002, 2019 as the reference. Okay? I hope that's clear. So, some notes lang about implementing the, what they call, uh, in, uh, is there such a term? Innovated QMS. <laughs> May mga innovations na, no? So, innovations start with scanning both the external and internal environments. Kasi we want your innovations to be connected to the needs and expectations of your stakeholders, of your public, of your interested parties. Auditing the organization grounds innovations with reality and provides perspective in implementation. You know, purpose ng auditing, eh, di ba? To see kung masyadong nasa taas, masyadong hindi feasible yung inintroduce yung innovations. Kasi, di ba? Innovations can be out of this world, eh. Can be so weird. So, kailangan ma-connect ma nyo sa reality. Ano ba reality ng organization nyo? Ano ba reality ng QMS nyo? Pwede ba itong innovations na to? O nananaginip lang ako? Okay? And the audit will tell you that. Evidence-based system thinking is a way to think about innovating the QMS. Kasi you have to look at the entire QMS in its entirety, in its totality. Kasi alam nyo na if you make a change in one part of the QMS, one process in the QMS, it ripples, may chain reaction siya with the other processes. You might you might end up reconfiguring the entire QMS. You know, risk lang with innovating the QMS. The practice of business process management or BPM, as we discussed earlier, organizes and disciplines the management process of the management of process innovations. We said that distinctly, kila, it, it consider nyo, Process design, diba? process implementation and control, diba? uh, process measurement and evaluation, and then process improvement. Follow that flow in introducing innovations in your processes. Innovation, oh, sorry. Innovation design comes with process and change analysis. Meaning, pag sinabing process and change analysis, you refer to technical workflow, impact, cost benefit, job performance. Make connection siya. Maapetuhan yan. So tingnan nyo, ano impact ng innovation dyan? Sa so, workflow nyo, yung workflow kasi, di ba? Yun yung pagkakasequence ng processes. Ano impact niya sa trabaho nyo? Will it cost you more to do this innovation that doesn't justify the benefit that you can get from it? At ano impact sa trabaho, sa the way you perform your job? Kasi mababago eh. And just a note lang, innovation is best done collaboratively. Kasi you can combine ideas with other members of the organization. 
kasi baka meron silang iniisip din. And you can synergize your ideas together to come up with uh, feasible innovations. Remember guys, ha, you don't innovate para masabi lang na nag-innovate kayo. Ha? Dapat justify yung innovation nyo. Much like any other thing about uh, ISO, anything that you do, changes are okay. Sabi ng ISO, changes are welcome for as long as they are documented properly and go through the process of audit and review. Okay? And especially for innovation, di ba? You don't innovate kasi gusto nyo lang or trip nyo lang o gusto nyo magpa-impress lang. Kailangan acceptable siya, kailangan makatulong talaga sa organization nyo, makatulong sa performance ng mga tao nyo, makatulong talaga sa proseso nyo. Kung hindi, kalimutan nyo na kahit napaka-innovative pa niyan, don't care. Di ba? Kiber. Di ba? What's the point of doing innovation? O kaya, mas maging magastos lang ang operations nyo, mas maging mabagal, mas hindi makakapag, hindi hindi makakop, mas mahirapan yung mga taong nag-perform ng process, ng trabaho nila. Don't do that innovation. That's a stupid innovation. Okay? So, may direction ng innovation, may need for innovation, may ina-apply ng innovation. Hindi lang basta magawa nyo lang. So, innovation capability makes innovations routine. Alam nyo, parang part of life na, part of way of life na ng organization. Second nature to everyone na. Innovation is designed and implemented through communication, of course. So, people need to talk to each other to be able to innovate. User training makes the practice of innovations correct, di ba? Kasi it's a new thing, di ba? So, may mga gagamit ang mga tao niyan para ma-practice ng tama. So, you should provide user training. Innovations have to be integrated into the organization's operations na eventually maglalaho yan, magiging invisible yan sa operations niyo kasi magiging seamless na yung integration niya sa operations na magiging part talaga ng operations. Innovations have to be institutionalized and personalized. Meaning, it's, it has to be something official para sundin ng lahat na itong innovations na, innovations na to talaga magiging part na ng process natin, talaga magiging part na ng system natin. But more importantly, kailangan ma-personalize ng bawat isa na talagang walang resistance, walang kontra sa paggamit ng mga innovations na introduce nyo. Ito na yung mga associated standards na nabanggit na natin kanina with regard to ISO 56,000, uh, with regard to innovation management, including yung ISO 56,000 to 2019. So take a look at them. Oh. Wala pa nga dyan yung 56,001. Ay, hindi. Wala, wala, wala pang year kasi uh, other development pa. Same with uh, ISO 56,006 and 56,007. Basta meron dyan yung idea management. Hindi ko lang matandaan na because ISO has so many numbers. <laughs> ang hirap i-divine. Ang hirap, uh, ang hirap ma ma-recall. Ang hirap tandaan. Okay? Pero yung 56,000 series, this, uh, this standard uh, pertains, to, ano, pertains to innovation management. O, ito yung laman, ito yung requirements, overview ng requirements ng 56,002. As you can see from the screen, uh, high-level structure, very much similar to ISO 9001-2015. So you should be familiar with the uh, outline or with the structure. Oh, ito lang. Good practices. Yan. Ito na tayo. Knowledge value creation practice. Hmm. So, kailangan ng knowledge sa innovation. I'm not saying that you get into knowledge management, but you, if you don't have the knowledge, you don't know your organization, you don't know your job, you don't know your processes, you don't know your QMS, you cannot innovate. Okay? So first things first. Diba? Para to create value, you need to have knowledge. Okay? Evidence-based practice, sabi nga natin, yung innovations should produce results. And the results are documented as evidence. So if your, if your innovations cannot produce the results, you cannot have evidence, right? Mm. Competency-based performance because only competent people 
have the knowledge to think about innovations. Mm. Kaya you hire competent people, you evaluate their performance based on competencies. Then of course, at the end of the spectrum is recognizing them, rewarding them for the innovations that they have introduced. Diba? So it follows na you should also reconfigure your recognition and reward system of your organization. And then as we said, collaboration. So collaborative relationships among work units. People should work together. And then, mas madali kung process-based yung structure because you can see the connection, the relationship among the processes, regardless of the work unit. So the the work units cannot work in silos. Right? They should be working together. And of course, organizational learning, which is a totally different field, but definitely related to innovation management. Okay? Uh, we recently, uh, in the graduate school, we recently introduced uh, or in offer namin yung Master in Public Management, Major in Knowledge Management. And uh, one of the courses there uh, is uh, Innovation Management and another course is on Organizational Learning. So obviously, Organizational Learning, Innovation Management are related to Knowledge Management. Okay, so. We are, I don't know, I think, I haven't checked with the learning management staff, pero I think we're offering this August na yun, okay? And I'm the supervising fellow of that program. Okay, and then we have open learning culture because uh, people should be uh, receptive to changes, receptive to innovations. And of course, having an attend, innovation takes time. Okay, the, 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 the people should be given time and space to think it over, to think about innovations. You cannot rush them. Ang challenges naman, you start the school because they do not want to see the changes. They do not want to change their habits. It's too difficult. Ito na nakasalari namin, mahirap magbago. Okay? And of course, structures and policies can also get in the way. You're not allowed to do this. You're not allowed to do that because of so many policies in the organization. Even yung mga external regulatory requirements. And of course, culture, practice, mindset, behaviors. You talk about people. People can also get in the way of innovation because they don't want to innovate. They don't want new... You know, the, the, the ironic thing about people, we are curious about new things, pero we're also quick to resist the new things. Pag nahihirapan na tayo, if we find it difficult, if uh, we have to learn a lot, we have to do things na we don't usually do, yung mga ganun. So we resist the change. Pero what can we do if we want innovation? Innovation entails changes, whether you like it or not. So you have to accept the possibility of doing changes even with your personal life if you want to accept innovation. Yeah. Of course, technology and resources can get in the way by by, by means of uh, no, by means of uh, resource uh, by means of visibility, right? Innovations can only be visible with the support of the needed technology and resources. And then, of course, since I so pinagusapan is about documentation and recording, diba? Kung sa business location, 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 <laughs> diba sa um, so ISO is about documentation, documentation, documentation. Hmm. That matiyaga kayong mag-record, mag, mag, mag take note. There. Oh, ito yung mga next steps. We're at the tail end na. Hmm. Sir John? Yes, yes. Mga questions maybe we, Before we go to the next steps, maybe you'd like to make some, ano, uh, to respond to some of the queries. Yeah. Because yeah. if this is going to be our last slide, um, yeah. First question pa from YouTube, Sir Alan de Guzman. Uh, Nia said that should the practice of risk-based thinking or risk management in ISO 9001 be the only source for innovation? I, of course not. Yeah, course. a lot. Uh -oh. Uh, because uh -oh. there's an issue, no? You can innovate. Yeah. Oh, there's an issue. Okay, yeah. If you keep on communicating, talking to your stakeholders, diba? Yeah. Oh, There's proactive way of just improving through innovating. Yeah. yeah. Top management. 
bakit nag-iisip naman din sila, di ba? Yeah. <laughs> so they can oh, you might change in the management, in the directions that they want to take, the so staff plan. Uh, at saka di ba may ISO on customer handling, uh, complaints handling sa customers. Minsan yung mga feedback ng customers, mga reklamo nila, you can innovate eh. Definitely, sir. Yeah. So maraming And, courses. Yeah, as long as the, the customer's needs are evolving, the processes will continuously be evolving. Therefore, it's inevitable for us to also be innovating. So, yeah, I know. Yeah. Pag nabago pang ang mandate nyo, nabago yung, di ba? That could also introduce, like, like consider this, di ba? Recently, naghiwala yung DICT at DOTR. Di nabago yun. May innovations dapat doon, di ba? Especially for DICT. Kasi before, non-existent ang ICT, di ba? So, yun ganun. So, pwede rin yung mandate. Yeah. Sige, okay. next. Sir, next question from Rina Lin. Ms. Rina Lin Dumol. Is there an ideal timeline or the number of months uh, parang period wherein to innovate again or to adopt a new... In It's like siguro the cycle, sir. The cycle of innovation. Uh -huh. Is it uh, mabilis ba? Lagi-lagi? Or merong oh, period? Okay. How many times to innovate in a year? Is there a rule of thumb or is it a case-to-case -case basis? That's uh, her question. Kahit ano, kahit, ano, ayoko maging showbiz ang sagot ko na it depends. Yeah? Pero it's really, it depends eh. Kasi, uh, una, okay, innovation, hindi talaga uh, in a rush. Hindi siya naka-plan. Kasi, yun nga, kaya nga doon sa discussion natin about innovation paradox, it's so ironic na you want to systematize, you want to discipline the process para continually nag innovate kayo. And yet, pag ganun, masyado mong kinahon, pinlano, masyado mong ginawa, predictable yung innovation, hindi na siya ganun ka-innovative. <laughs> so, at saka, yung innovation kasi minsan nangyayari na lang. So, may mga innovation na pinang naiisip na lang and napaka-fleeting nung moment na if you don't capitalize on it, if you don't exploit it at the moment, mawawala na forever yung innovation na yun. O kaya, innovation presents itself kasi may need eh. Ma nawawala na yung relevance nung organization na. You have to innovate na. Yung ganun. So, there are many reasons, there are many triggers that you can look at para mag-innovate kayo, pero never na, ay, third month na to, quarter, quarterly, dapat nag innovate tayo. So, upo nga tayo, let's innovate. Eh, walang lumalabas. Di ba? Isang linggo na kayo nag-meeting, walang lumalabas kasi wala pang need siguro o wala pa nakakaisip ng innovation. So, you don't force the issue. Ang sinasabi lang, that's why we want to have an innovation management system para systematize, discipline yung process na we, we may recognition tayo na every now and then when the situation calls for it, there's there are opportunities, we can innovate. We are capable of innovating. We have the resources na naka-standby. Management is receptive to innovations. Yung ganon. Okay? Yun ang sinasabi natin. Kaya, definitely... Pakasubis na lang din tayo. Basta po sa QMS, continual improvement is a permanent objective of the organization. Yeah. One improvement is innovation. Siguro po, at least in a cycle of a quality management system, as we implement the Plan Do Check Act, di ba po, we plan in the QMS, we implement, we audit, we check the management review, di po ba? Siguro in one cycle, at the very least, lagi po tayo merong proposal for improvement and we manage changes. Remember, in quality management system, there's always planning for changes. Sir John, one more question here okay. from Ms. Maria Elena Edora. Do we need to create a procedure relative to the implementation of innovations or just integrate in the process as presented in the quality manual? So, ang tanong ay, may, pwede, kailangan bang may procedure? Ah, yung 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 ah uh, pag meron ka yung innovation na introduce to si implement kina definitely I, I think sir more on the process itself do they need to like put in a, a a step a key step for them to have the procedure like step one to uh, do an analysis ganon sir or can they just uh discuss their innovation process 
in the quality manual as part of the description. Parang ganun po yung question ni Ma'am Elena. Ah. Ah. Kasi ganito yan, uh, depends sa intent, no? Kung pinag-uusapan natin is establishing an innovation management system in your organization, that should, there should be step-by-step -step na procedure or process. Kasi you're formally establishing an innovation management system in your organization. Pero kung ang, ang intent is that you're introducing innovations do sa mismong processes nyo sa QMS, that's a different concern yung diniscuss natin kanina, then um definitely ipapasok niyo yung pag-introduce ng innovation sa process itself tapos magkakaroon lang kayo ng step by step process do sa implementation na ng innovation na inintroduce niyo do sa process so those are two different things depende sa kung anong concern niyo okay so there meron pa ba Ange? Uh, I think that's all naman po for the questions. Uh, let's just go to the next step, sir. Yeah, sige. Have a, uh, we have three minutes remaining before uh, 12 yeah. o'clock. Thank you. Okay. So, um, just to uh, look at yung mga next steps nyo, okay, after this webinar, okay, eto yung mga concerns nyo if you want to make the innovation management system work or yung pag sa mga innovation sa QMS nyo. So, of course, nandito pa rin yung top management, commitment, and involvement kasi the entire thing cannot move without top management support, obviously. Tapos, um, I don't know what happened here. Sorry na wala eh, naging SO. Pero ISO dapat to. ISO 9000 for 2018. Um, sabi ko nga, ito yung usually na go-to reference if you want to look at the continual improvement of your QMS or quality management system. Of course, you still have to do QMS audit or review uh, the most recent uh, management review and internal audit report. Okay? Kung ano man yun, you, you use that as reference. Yung pinakahulin yung uh, QMS audit or review ng, ano, ng, ng QMS nyo. Brainstorming for process innovations, of course. Uh, look at your QMS, tinan yung mga processes, what innovations you can introduce. Okay? Brainstorming lang naman yan. Innovation project management training kasi innovation is a project. Diba? When you introduce innovations, they have to first be in project form. Kaya you have to have some training on project management na apply nyo for your introduce na mga innovations. And then training on, eto, wala pa nga lang eh. Uh, 56,000 man, pag lumabas na. And then 56,002, um, itong topic natin ngayon. And then ISO TR 56004. Available na rin since 2019. And then uh, there's a separate na generic training on innovation management that you can attend, like yung mga design thinking, yung TRIS na training, ganon. And you can also engage with uh, the DAP's innovation lab. And then developing innovation capability by doing the assessment first and trying to find out what are your what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are as far as innovation management cap capability is concerned. So ito lang, just to recap, just to summarize what we covered uh, this morning. So what did we learn today? Process innovations are applied to certified QMS. Although, uh, as I said from the start, it's not a requirement, pero it would be a lot easier kung maayos na yung QMS nyo kasi certified na. Process innovations require changes in the QMS. Oh. Yun nga, yun ang logic na kaya mas okay kung certified yung QMS nyo kasi in the first place, yung innovations na iisipin nyo are applied to your processes. These changes are audited. Diba? To make them official and to make them uh, certifiable pa rin dun sa ISO 9001-2015. Kasi in this case, you're getting still certified to ISO 9001 kasi wala pa nga yung 56001 and you're applying innovations to your QMS. So, ang certification sa 9001 pa rin. These audited changes undergo management review kasi it's a requirement. The, especially for corrective actions, you can only implement that if, it, if the corrective actions have undergone management review. The QMS changes become the organization's new practices. So, dun yung reckoning. Napapractice ba yung mga innovations o mga changes na introduce nyo? These innovations are institutionalized in the QMS 
and personalized by each member of the organization. We keep on saying that institutionalization and personalization. So there, thank you everyone. Um, it's a nice webinar, short but sweet. So thank you. Thank you, Sir John. So, so we learned uh, about the concepts, principles, and in passing the requirements of the ISO 56002. So this is so the, because this is an introductory course, yeah, and so we're here to just open your minds on the concept of innovation and how ISO 56002 can be integrated with ISO 9001 quality management system. If you need further detailed information about ISO 56002, maybe we can discuss uh, after the session. Sige po. Um, to continue with our course objective of co-create of talking about, discussing about the co-creation innovation process. We'll be seeing you in the next session with our two resource persons, Sir Adi and Ms. Leanne. So we will continue on the next, the second part. Uh, the, we will continue the discussion on the second part of this introductory course on innovation, manage, on innovation management. Okay, everyone? So thank you so much po, for participating. I hope that you learned a lot when it comes to innovation from the perspective of ISO 56002. Okay, sige po, for our last activity, may I request everyone to please uh, open their cameras for our usual photo opportunity. Um, Sarah, would you like to open your camera po, for the photo taking? Picture taking, Mom Giselle from PPA. Uh, Mom Diana, if possible, po. And Miss Marla. Si Attorney Ramos from BAP. Okay, sige po. Um, Miss Lem will be taking our photos. Miss Lem, uh, signal na lang po tayo. Okay lang po. Okay, sige. Since everybody's ready. So give us your uh, most uh, biggest smile. Thank yeah, you. I'll have to take it in segments. So please bear with me. Hold your smile for a little bit, okay? Okay, taking the first photo for everybody. Hold on. Hey. Keep on smiling. Keep on smiling. Keep on keeping on. Hold because on. It's a happy Friday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. From GCQ. Okay. GCQ. <laughs> Okay, I need to do the second portion, so hold on. All right. Okay, hold on. Technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. Next group. Okay. Smile. Okay. All right. Thank you, Miss. One Lem. more, one more, uh, one more, more, one more. I'm so sorry. Okay. I'm so sorry. One more, please. The last group. Para ma practice din natin ang ating smiles. <laughs> okay. On to my last group. Okay, ladies. These are all ladies. Ladies, smile. Okay, I'm done. Thank you very okay. much, everybody. So, thank you, Miss Lim. So we're also Good done for our for, for the first part of our discussions on innovation. We'll see you in the next part on August 18. Same links, and we'll see the same participants hopefully in YouTube. Make sure that you are. Uh, uh, have recorded in our uh, plug in in our attendance sheet both for uh, YouTube and Zoom so that it becomes our monitoring for the certificates. Have a good lunch, everyone, and happy Friday again. Bye, Paul. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Paul. Stay safe, Paul. Have a good lunch. Stay safe. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Sir Beards. May we request po sana evaluation links for our YouTube participants? Thank you. Okay, sige po. Our YouTube participants, kindly make sure that you have opened the course evaluation in the speaker links po.
before we end the session. Salamat po. Also, the same po for our Zoom participants. Yes po. Thank you, Ms. Maan, for reminding. Have a good lunch, everyone. Bye po. Happy weekend. Bye-bye. Bye po. We will be ending the meeting right now. Thank you so much. Please just remember to log in the attendance. Send us your evaluation for the certificate monitoring. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Sige po. Tanong ko lang po, one last, Ma'am Angie. Okay na po ba yung mga evaluation links? Nabuksan na po ba? A thumbs up na lang po. Mukhang busy pa sila nag-evaluation, Ma'am. <laughs> Ma'am, maybe we can... Ma'am, hindi ko po alam. Ma'am, maybe ito? we can send them an email of our evaluation link. Mas Sige po. Siguro. Ma'am Rogelia, sa chat box po, ilagay ko na. Opo, ma'am. Opo, sige, thank you. It's in the chat box na po, but maybe Miss Ma'am can share them through email as well. Opo, ma'am. Thank you so much, everyone. Ma'am, nakikilan niyo na po sa chat box. I can also send din naman po. Sige. Sige po. Thank you po. Salamat. Bye-bye. Bye po. Have a good lunch.